Hello and welcome to episode 83 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. First time ever back from vacation. Okay, there it goes. Back from vacation. Yeah. From the Bahamas? No. <laughs> Did you go anywhere? Because I didn't go anywhere. I went to a couple places, but I, can't, I went to the Redwoods. Okay, where'd you go? I went to uh, Honduras, I went to Mexico, and I went to um, Belize on a cruise with my wife for my 10 year anniversary. Nice. So on this cruise, did you actually leave port and go to Mexico City and Honduras and all that? <laughs> Mexico City is much further inland than uh, just the shore, so it's kind of hard to just go to Mexico City from the port. So is it like the Me like the Jersey Shore, the Mexican Shore, where the heck are Guidos? Well, yeah. I guess they'd be like <laughs> like gauchos <laughs> or something. No, we went to Cozumel. It was actually quite Americanized. I have two questions that I've been dying to ask since I heard that. Uh, did Melissa want to take you to a donkey show? <laughs> yeah. Dang. I said no, though. Oh, good for you. <laughs> She's a freak. <laughs> And second question, did you get called Wedo or Guelo at all? No, uh -huh. that never happened. Everyone there spoke English. Like, I barely heard anyone speak Spanish. Because they're so, I mean, probably 90% of their uh, economy is tourism, so everyone speaks English. Oh, okay. So do we want to talk about this setting for a second? Oh, yeah. That's for a our visual audience who... That took the time out of their day to actually watch the watch video. Watch on YouTube. You can get to see this sexy face. <laughs> we're no, we're like Kiss. We're no longer hiding behind the makeup. So, <laughs> But that was a bad idea for them, too. <laughs> so let's go over this, this trip that we planned, this fiasco. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's dry in Sacramento. When you're looking for treasure you don't find anything it takes a long time guys to find a, a bunch of treasure now and one day i just waltzed on into dimple oh fuck that and found a mother load yeah you did <laughs> ninja gaiden 3 ninja gaiden 3 with the instruction booklet there's two copies of zelda 2 the adventure of link mario 3 which was only a dollar Dragon Warrior 4. Dang. And that got my blood flowing to Man. just get back out there. That's an explosion tromboner level. And all the games were, majority were four nine three ninety nine. The Zeldas were eight ninety nine. But still, finding Dragon Quest 4 added to fucking Dimple is like amazing. It's like a holy grail. And it was a beautiful copy too. <laughs> so, I was like... I've got the itch, but Sacramento is fucking... It, it took us three years to find a mother load. And it's, they're all like turning into hipsters, especially the dimples. And the Goodwills. Oh, we'll, we'll get into those later. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we walk in, I walk into Dimple up in Folsom, and you guys saw this on the page if you're if you liked our facebook page i posted it treasure hunting for nostalgia on facebook tiger heli a 25 cent nintendo cart do you guys remember the price tag they wanted 7.99 sounds like nine bucks or something 15.99 like that. that's oh. right i remember that <laughs> and i would i called brad up and i said can you believe this and i was talking on the phone heck of loud he's like they want 15 dollars for a 25 cent game and they didn't care. Some idiot will walk in there and buy it. So I was like, you know what? Let's venture out. Let's go out. Let's go on the road. Once a month, let's just go out, find flea markets, and plan a destination trip there. You know, take one weekend and just fuck it and do it. Yeah. So we chose Glorious Alameda. <laughs> the Island of Islands. <laughs> and... <laughs> Let me tell you, this place I will never drive to again. Oh, man. Fuck this place. <laughs> For one, take downtown Sacramento and mix it with New York City and then divide it by Oakland and you get Alameda. <laughs> take out the, the uh, cultural in the mix because everyone on this island is pretty much 
hoity toity. <laughs> But uh, stuck uh, but uh, individuals. So enough about Alameda. I think everything that could have went wrong with this trip went wrong. First of all, the flea market that we were going to go to today, coincidentally and I guess like a slap in the face kind of, they're only open the first Sunday of every month. We are recording on April thirteenth, fourteenth, and it's not a it's not a Sunday or the first Sunday of the month. So that was a wash. We didn't get all our equipment. Uh, we got we were supposed to get a, a tight ass microphone. We have a microphone pole and everything to look all professional. We spent quite a pretty penny on this microphone setup. It's supposed to come with a mic. An arm cannon and boom arm, <laughs> boom arm, <laughs> and, kind of the type of band, <laughs> and something else. We only got the arm, okay? So I, I I'll call my bad on that <laughs> because I could have opened it up. <laughs> but to be fair, where is that little piece? The, which one? The one that you took away over there, <laughs> because when <laughs> when everyone when this when we opened this last night. I thought this was the microphone. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, so if I would have opened it, I probably would have been like, here's the microphone, here's the boom arm, and we're been good to go. But Where's the wire? I thought it was wireless. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first fiasco. The second fiasco, what else do we got going on? Um, this wonderful living space. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we walk in here. We I'm sure you saw the po- the pictures. It's a fucking daycare. <laughs> you see all the little artwork from all the little retarded children that they, oh, <laughs> that they probably. I thought you can only say it if you're like referring to things that aren't. I'm referring to inferior children. All <laughs> children are retarded. Okay. Oh, <laughs> can, I, can I see the tent? <laughs> Probably. Um, the tent. I, I think you're standing right in front, or sitting right in front of it, unfortunately. <laughs> Why don't you take the camera and like spin it around? So here's the tent. My only fear is that it might not. I oh, might not okay. get into yeah. a good position again. Okay, that's fine. Just leave it there. Yeah, you can see. You can see the tent. So the fucking tent. <laughs> Lift it up. Lift it up. <laughs> It's like a big top. It's like Pee Wee's Playhouse. We got arts and crafts. A purse. <laughs> I'll tell you what, no retard would make this. Oh, oh, this dear. is some fine craftsmanship. <laughs> you should hang it on the clothespin. <laughs> you keep your tampons. You're really testing it. the limits of our microphones right now. <laughs> <laughs> so. And then we got that. So it's just been a whole. I don't know. Debacle? The, no uh, TV. There's this little <laughs> monitor right here. Yeah. 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 That's our TV. <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> so, that's what we've been doing. So today we went out and played... Oh, the, the video card wouldn't work on your computer. The video card None wouldn't work. None of your equipment does. Do you, want, do you want to talk about your, your brother? Not being here, or is that Matthew James Chavez? <laughs> he, to be fair, he had strep throat for a week last week, like the week prior, and he's a supervisor at the same place I work at called HealthNet, and he had a lot of catching up to do. So I thought. We <laughs> this saw... fucker posted a Facebook picture of him partying with his other supervisor friends with the yellow fucking fedora on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that about sums it up. They're sitting at some restaurant, like just drinking. So that was more important than this. And then there was also the debacle getting into the the house. Oh, oh Bob! It took like oh, 15 Bob. minutes. <laughs> so we get here like nine o'clock at night. I'm already fucking tired because mm-hmm. I go to bed so early and I wake up uh, early. The <laughs> Airbnb, get your shit together. <laughs> By the way, we got this wonderful uh, setting from Airbnb. Uh, so <laughs> we go to unlock the keypad, and I get a text message that lets me know the code to get into the the little lockbox. Lockbox, get the key. It says four zero six nine. 
No. It's a five-digit code. I remember seeing it on Airbnb when I signed in. So I said, oh, I'll just sign in with my phone. His phone's not fucking working. Nick and I are trying no, every single combination. My, my phone's working. <laughs> it's just it won't log into Airbnb for some reason. So I have to get out my work laptop because that's where I booked the the reservation. Go online there. Had to tether my phone as a hotspot device to my computer. Took about 10 minutes to do that. And then we finally got the code for 0690. I don't remember if that was there. No, there's a <laughs> 5 in there somewhere. Okay. And we were able to get in. Well, that was a mess. Yeah. So, we got the camera working. Camera's working. We'll see. <laughs> it says it's working. Okay. At so, least Audacity's working. So, let's get into some treasure. Well, we want to give a breakdown of what we're doing. Yeah, go we've, ahead. we've got some treasure. Well, why don't you tell them how the show's normally going to run? Okay. Check this out. So, every episode's going to be recorded via camera we're gonna have the sweet ass mic so you could hear us better on the next episode so every episode we're gonna start out with treasure hunting going to a flea market we're gonna take our uh, gorilla phones what no gorilla camera what do they call it gorilla journalism sure with our phones and record ourselves at the flea market you know check taking out take taking in the sites and checking everything out you know, maybe get some haggling on, show some um, funny, like, little trinkets you could find. Maybe talk to some of the vendors and see if they have any interesting stories. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to give you guys a collective game of the month. Where we're going to not only record the game, <laughs> but also get picture in a picture so you can see our reactions as we play through the game together. And then we've got, what else we got? The um, dares. So we have also got, it, we're gonna have three sections for treasure hunting. Se- section one is gonna be what I just talked about. Section two, we're gonna give each other dares to do, kind of like um, a particular show on True TV called Impractical Jokers. I, that's that's how I explain it to people. We're gonna give each other dares, so like, I'll pull out a dare and give yourself an example of dare. So, like, we're all going to put a dare in, like, a hat or a box, something. So, you you might not, not want to do your dare too bad because you might draw it. Yeah, so you don't want to say, like, break something on purpose at a flea market. Well, be- I would do that. Okay, so me <laughs> would you put that in there. So, I was, uh, no, I was thinking, you know, go accidentally break something on ex on accident like a little toy or something and say oh sorry i broke this and, and, and then just all, walk away yeah just think you know stupid things like that if you refuse to do the dare twice in a row then you get a punishment and do we want to go over our punishment list yeah <laughs> so this is going to be our our punishment list for uh not only the dares but also when we compare our treasure and if he's got more treasure value brought to the table than I do, then I get a punishment. The punishment is this. The shock tap. We're going <laughs> to uh, do a RNG, right? Yeah. Uh, random number generator. Uh, one, through t- one through 20. 20. Yeah. Shock tap. Explain that. Uh, that's when you get hooked up to the shock master here, which I have... <laughs> leads that I'm going to be putting on my neck here for the game, which is going to suck, but uh, you get shock mastered, and then you get a nut tap at the same time. I've had this done to me before, and it fucking sucks. And then shock master, just just this, a nut tap, a nut tap, <laughs> icicle. Oh no, this is a nut tap, bam, like that, right? And then the icicle's like, mmm, yeah, with two fingers, and you do this, mmm. Corn dog. <laughs> That's when you need someone in the butthole. <laughs> Corn dog in crisis has over two thousand views. Check it out. <laughs> My ass is famous. Yep. <laughs> the shock dog. Oh no. There's a shock dog. <laughs> so you get hooked up to the shock no, master. No fucking dog. I'm sure they got the gist of the shock dog. Shock master and fucking corn dog. <laughs> and then. 
minus ten dollars to your next treasure bank for the following month mm -hmm. minus five dollars to your treasure bank the next following month taxi okay classic taxi, taxi where <laughs> if i get punished with the taxi i have to pick him up at his house and we drive around and hit thrift stores and yard sales mm -hmm. boston crab oh fuck the classic <laughs> wrestling move yeah uh, Rick Martel's submission move. <laughs> this is when thing gets a little dark. Bamboo shoots under the fingernails. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> That's 11. Okay, so 11 is that. Break a pinky toe. Oh. <laughs> That's 12. What do you do that with pliers or a hammer? Your hand. Oh. <laughs> you have to do it to yourself? Nope. Because you won't do it. You won't break your own toe. If it's a punishment, then you have to. <laughs> Punch to the liver. Oh. <laughs> Fucking liver punch. Donate an organ. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? It's your choice. Your choice. I guess you start with kid. Does skin count? Because skin's an organ. Everyone's like, what's the largest organ on the... In your body, it's your skin. <laughs> okay. Wait, can you donate skin? No, it has to be internal. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Fingernail clippers to the teeth. Oh! <laughs> what number is that? 15. Oh, don't get 15. 16. <laughs> razor blade to the body. Oh. Uh, <laughs> with salt? I didn't put salt Okay, on. good. 17. Minus one hundred dollars to the treasure oh, bank next man. month. Oh, there's no there's no getting out of that. Eighteen, uppercut to the nuts. Oh. Nineteen, we're gonna get political here. Waterboarding. Oh. Man. Twenty is special. Twenty has its own wheel, which we'll reveal if it ever comes up. Number 20 is death. <laughs> so, let's not let's not roll a 20. That's a critical hit right there. You know, I've never heard of one. I'm, I'm making a, a update here. I'm changing the minus 5 to treasure bank to an ass punch. <laughs> ass punch wasn't on there. So that's our prize and punishment list. Our punishment, punishment. list. So let's... Uh, <laughs> move on to treasure hunting okay so where'd you go treasure hunting yard sales okay I, I couldn't i went to a couple dimples and nothing i found nothing at dimple dimple sucks i went to goodwills we, we, goodwills fucking suck now they're charging 19.99 for super mario brothers duck hunt Ooh. um so i just went around to yard sales i went on a facebook site uh sacramento yard sales and they said um, this Saturday, come early, we have Wii games, Game Boy games, DS games, and Sega Genesis games. I was like, I'm so fucking going to this thing. So that's where I found my treasure. I went to Goodwills, I went to Dimple, found some stuff there, uh, thrift stores. Uh, I, I did okay. I don't think I'm, I'm going to win this one, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. So... I'm going to reveal some of mine, because I have some uh, clunkers in here. Oh, you know what? Yeah, okay. I don't want to, I know what I'll do. Actually, I might be able to win this one oh, with a fun. gamble. Gamble? Venezia trophy. Venezia. <laughs> with, uh, what was it, with the card? <laughs> Did that sell yet? That shit got thrown away. What? It didn't sell. <laughs> when has a Goodwill product ever sold? What'd you bring to? Well, you brought laser discs one time. Those got thrown away. You brought. You throw away for hitboxing Helena on laser discs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you brought records, a Rolling Stone record and a Star Wars record. That Come got on. Thrown. Those got thrown away. You brought this stupid Marvin the Martian clock. That was That's you. you. <laughs> You brought fucking PC games. And every time you brought this shit, you won because it, it's worth $50. <laughs> That's what it said. It's brand new. So rare they didn't have a price. So, Priceless. Sorry. No, it wasn't brand new. It was just complete. Oh, okay. So, here's some of my, uh, my treasure. 
Just Dance? 2015. Okay. Let me see if I thought I had the breakdown here. Okay. This game I paid $4 for, for at the Goodwill. Yeah. Is it a Goodwill good, on good, Yeah, Goodwill. For 10 Okay. Uh, we need to keep the score. I brought mine over here. Yeah, but I need here, to. Here, I mean, I can, I can do something. I need to look mine up, too. But, I mean, in terms of, like, keeping score, I can at least keep score for you guys. Well, I've got all mine. Yeah, this he has all. We'll you have your total. Out. Okay. I'll keep rest. Yeah, I'll keep rest. So, we got this but this bad boy. Sims 2 busting Sims. out. No, The Sims busting out, not part two. Okay, The Sims. I paid $4 at the Goodwill. Worth 8 <clears throat> Okay. So you you get credit for the total value. Total right? value, yeah. Because as long as it's more than double what you paid. Yep. Yeah. And how you said Sims is worth eight. Yep. <clears throat> so this bad boy, I had to cheat. They initially wanted five ninety nine for Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank. What I did was I took I ripped off the five. <laughs> And I left the 99, and I said, I don't know how much this is. Can you let me know? And then they were like, just a dollar. Oh, man. <laughs> Goodwill switcheroo. <laughs> and then that one was $10. Worth 10. I have a few other clunkers here. So clunkers meaning just barely scraping the double value mark. This was a nice dimple, a nice dimple find. Dance, dance, revolution. Okay, two ninety nine uh -huh. worth five ninety nine. No, dance, dance. Nine dollars. Nine. Okay. Brain H two. Okay. Goodwill, blue CD DVD, two dollars worth four. Complete. Okay. It's worth four complete. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, what else do I have? <clears throat> Mike Tyson boxing. Ooh. We got it for three from the Goodwill. It is worth nine dollars. Okay. Baseball Simulator 1000. Okay. Got it for two dollars, and it is worth five. Six. Six. Legend of Zelda. Great Do card. Doesn't count because I got this before, but decided yeah. not to show it off. Yeah. Let's go into the collection. Yeah. <clears throat> Super Sprint. 99 cents a dimple. Worth $8. Oh, wow. And when I found that, I found... Yeah. NBA Jam. NBA Jam for two dollars. Okay. Worth nine. Okay. Giving me a grand total of seventy-three dollars. Okay. And then I have the mystery one. Fingers crossed. All right. So let's take a look at mine. Um, I should have read out the prices, but I figured they change. So I got all these games for fifty dollars total. I haggled. She wanted seventy five. I told her that Lo Logan was into Pokemon and he's never played them before. He wants to play some GBA ones, some DS ones. So I got it for fifty bucks. I haggled it down. <clears throat> Pokemon Platinum. Uh huh. Uh, it's not complete. Uh, it's twenty one fifty four. 
Yeah. It has emerald. Broken wire emerald. Are you keeping a total, Nick? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, that's thirty seventy four. Emerald. Emerald. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I got. Oh, he, he didn't see. Platinum and then emeralds inside too. So I got two games. So platinum's worth twenty one dollars and emeralds worth thirty something. Yeah. Thirty. Thirty seventy four. Thirty one round up. I all mine I rounded up or rounded down. Okay. This game I've heard of it before and I've never seen it uh, anywhere except at the yard sale. Oh. Xenoblade Chronicles for Wii. Uh-huh. Uh, 1852, that actually went down. Uh, it's not complete. I tried to find the instruction booklet online. They didn't have it. I thought this game was hecka rare. It is. And it's only with 18 now? Yep. It's not rare. That sucks. That went down. I thought it was like a $100 game. Yeah, so did I. Okay. Um... And that last one, Fire Emblem. Oh shit! Shadow Dragon for DS. What am I at right now, Nick? Uh, twenty-one, thirty-one, nineteen. So forty-one, fifty, seventy-one. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. Two dollars. The no, <laughs> two dollars. Twenty-seven oh four. Okay, that's loose. Complete was fifty two fifty nine, but I couldn't find the book. Oh, but uh, and what's that total? Uh, so twenty one fifty two sixty one seventy one plus twenty seven is ninety eight. Ninety eight. Does that sound about right? You spent fifty. You didn't make a hundred. I did when the fucking <laughs> throw even. Xenoblade Chronicles were twenty three when I found it. So don't even. <laughs> With the sense, it rounds up to 100. Come on. It's close. So this is my mystery. Oh, shit. <laughs> if you guys can't see... Oh, man. Limited edition Dragon Ball Z card with one gold foil. <laughs> There's a holy grail out there for Dragon Ball cards. And they only came in these promo packs. They were... Six promos, only four released to the public, supposedly. It's been known for one of the other two to pop up, F5 and F6, go for $5,000. So we're going to open this bad boy up and see if one of those is in here. If so, you're getting some punishment. No, but... <laughs> Come on. Find out. <laughs> Oh, are you cutting through Android 18? It's not what's. Oh man, it's not it. Trunk Saga. What should it have been? I don't know. Is that a blister pack? Is that from the Trunks or Forge? So we've got nothing. Oh no. <laughs> that was a good gamble though. <laughs> So I'm guessing I lose this. I got you at $73 and I got Brad at $98. There's an asterisk on this one. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, so do we want to roll now and then do the punishment later? Yeah, we got to have him look something. We got to have him look, have something to look forward to at the end. Do you have RNG on there? I just downloaded it, yeah. What well, do you want? You just want one through twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Can you yeah. Him? <laughs> okay. What, what number comes up? Say when. Now. Nine. Do we do three and then pick? Then I pick my punishment. That's or, fine. Or just one. Three. Three is fine. Okay. So the first one was nine. Which is taxi. Seven. Minus ten to treasure bank. Zero is not an option, is it? One. Shock tap. You got to take the shock tap. <laughs> I'm taking the shock tap. Yeah. For the sake of pod. 
So in like an hour, you'll see Brandon get a shot cap after oh, he punches man. us. <laughs> okay, so for our collective game of the month, we've been playing around on this bad boy. Uh, Super NES Mini. But there's an asterisk to this. It's modded. And there's over 190 games on my mini. Yeah, it's pretty tight. It, it, it provided a lot of entertainment last night. We played Act Racer, Super Goals and Ghost. What else did we play? I played a little bit of Final Fight too. That's right. The weird thing was I didn't have the original Final Fight on there. I thought that was yeah. kind of funny. They have Final Fight 2 and they have Final Fight 3. Yeah. And so fun. You, the only returning character you could play as in part two is Hagar. Yeah. Cody and Guy. What happened to them? Uh, I C Cody got put in jail, but he comes back for three, doesn't he? Well, he got put in jail because how else do you explain Street Fighter Alpha three? Well, I'm sure there's a story that explained what happened to Cody and Guy. And that there was a little bit of an intro, but I got anxious and uh -huh. <laughs> skip past it. Yeah. <laughs> what else did we play? Um. I, th I, I tried Battletoads and Double Dragon, and that kind of, it didn't hold up. Yeah, so next month, we're going to have video so we could actually show you guys what we've been playing. We might even have something tonight. Yeah? I don't see why not. We can keep trying. Okay. We can try it, yeah. If so, it'll be right here. Okay. <laughs> nice. Get at us with your uh, suggestions, though. Like, if, you, if there's a particular game that you want to see us play or talk about. Yeah, we'd we've got know. Lufia 1 and 2. <laughs> we've got Mario Kart, Super Castlevania 4, Mario RPG, Super Metroid, Super Punch-Out. Super Metroid's fun. Yoshi's Island, maybe we should do that. I haven't played that game in heck of long. We've got all the Mega Man X's. We've got Gay-Ass Sonic the Hedgehog for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Star Fox 1 and 2, Me Mega Man X 2 and 3, I already said that. Do you have Bubsy? Fuck no. <laughs> we got like three different Street Fighter games, like Turbo, Hyper Fighting, and Regular, and Super Street Fighter 2, so get at us. Where should they get, get at us at? Well, they can just text us. Like, okay, no. <laughs> Maddie G. Oh, we have a Facebook page. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you can Facebook message us. And oh. we also have, you can post on there, on the page. We like people posting on there. We don't censor you guys, because fuck censorship, foreshadowing. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, Facebook, Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Like I said, I love this video. You could be like, Are and they'll be like, like a <laughs> Oh, let's not get too crazy. <laughs> so... What about individually? Have you guys been playing any video games? Um, I the last few games I played was the Evil Within Two and Elliot Quest. Um, Evil Within Two was really fun. I played the first one as well, and I finally got to play those after Brandon talked about them a little bit. And I actually platinumed the game. I got the um, Akumu mode. I beat that. Have you beat that yet? No, because you still have my copy. Oh, is that why? Yeah. I'll give it back to you and you can do a video. Finally! Comment. I've been waiting to fucking play this game on Akumu mode. Yeah, right. Akumu mode is after you beat it on hard mode. Basically, it's the same game, but you die in one hit. So, uh, there are a few parts where, uh, I, if you guys play it, you'll know that in chapter 11, I think, there's a trolley that you have to go across, and you can't, it's just like a little 4x4 four four space, and there's people throwing bottles at you, uh, Sights, everything. And this is, a, this is a horror game. Yeah, it's a survival, survival horror game. And they're just lobbing things. It's like a Resident Evil 4 view, kind of. And they're just lobbing things at you, and if you get hit, you die. They throw Molotov cocktails, so even if a little piece of flame hits you, you die. So what I basically strategized is I used the flash bolt. I upgraded that all the way and blinded them all, and they get blinded for like 20 seconds, and you just have to keep loading flash bolts and shooting everybody. And it was, I finally beat it, and um, four chapters later, I, once you get past that, it's pretty much easy, so um, that was real fun. Let's talk about this Elliot Quest game that mm -hmm. I've been playing, too. 
You ever hear of it? No. Neither have I until like a few months ago. The guys who made it took heavy inspirations on Zelda 2, A Link to the Past, mm. or Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, and made a game basically around that idea of just find, you know, go out there finding what you need to know. Like, just it's find. a Metroidvania game. Yeah. Hmm. But the thing is, there's so many fucking secrets in this game. Like, they don't tell you nothing. They don't. Like, there's no instruction booklet. Nothing. No, the, even the people online who have been playing it for a year and a half are like, I still don't know what this item does. Because the, the people who made the game are like, figure it out. Hmm. Like, there's this blue book that we got mm. that someone said, maybe it regenerates your, M, your MP faster. And I thought you get a charge shot for a bow and arrow. I thought it... In Less in the time. So maybe it shortens the time of things, like overall. Maybe. Could be. No, don't know. Yeah. Because the developers it's are so saying cryptic. Anything. Yeah. So about this kid named Elliot, who goes around and has to defeat four guardians to elemental guardians to to to, to get their power. So you defeat a fire guardian, you get power of fire, etc. For earth, wind, fire, water, to defeat this mage or the satyr who's supposedly supposed to destroy everyone. Yeah. Haven't beat the game yet, but it's really fun. The, um, is there a huge map that you don't know where things are until you go over them, there's an exclamation point over your head, then you're, you could enter it like Zelda and do stuff and find secrets. and It's really fun. Check it out. Yeah, it's fun. Well, you, Nick, play anything? Yeah, so I, I just recently started playing Earthbound. Nice. Uh, I don't want to talk about that yet, just kind of a teaser for our next episode. I'll probably uh, do a little bit more of a review about Earthbound. Uh, but the game that I had been playing prior to that was the new South Park game, Fractured But Whole. Yes. Uh, heck of a fun game. Have either of you guys played it? Not yet. Yeah, I, I really recommend it. Um, so I just wrote a few things I'd like to point out about the game. Um, it was released last year, 2017, by Ubisoft on PS4, Nintendo Switch, PC, and Gay Box One. Um, it's a sequel to 2014 Stick of Truth. Uh, in the game, you play as the new kid, and uh, right from the start, it's it's hilarious. Pretty much all from start to finish. Um, but the fun, the funniest part about the introduction is you're creating your character, and you actually get to select the the skin tone of your character. And you'll notice that from lighter to darker, the you'll see that the difficulty level will increase the darker you go. So I thought that was really that's hilarious. Funny. So if you're a white kid, then you're heck, it's like easy. Exactly. And then if you're a black kid, or is there anything darker than black, like the, nothingness in nature? <laughs> no, no, like for or like on the game, like Ethiopian. No, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, it's not true black. It's like dark brown, like Wesley Snipes style. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess. Uh, no. I like guess token. Really... Yeah, yeah, token black kid. Um. So basically, in the game, you're uh, so the stick of truth was all fantasy based. Uh, this game, Fractured But Whole, is all like superhero based. Um, no one in the game actually has superhero powers. Uh, it's it's all kind of like a figment of all their imaginations combined. Like the ninja episode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, fun with weapons. Fun with weapons, exactly. I was thinking <coughs> of the song. I was thinking, let's <laughs> fighting long. Um, but yeah, the, the new kid actually does have a special power, it seems. They, they treat it as if he does. And his sp- superpower is uh, he has the power to bend time with his farts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you'll have uh, interactions with Morgan Freeman, who owns the taco shop. <laughs> Did they actually get him to play in the game? I don't believe it's actually Morgan Freeman. Okay. Spoiler, I'm sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, but you'll get... A special burrito from him on occasion like when you, when you're ready to advance in the game and if you get this new burrito you can either stop time altogether you can make time go backwards or um, at the end of the game you get a burrito that actually makes you progress in time so that's pretty funny like the the, the burritos are supposed supposedly powering his farts in different ways oh yeah okay <laughs> uh, but the reason I wanted to talk about this game is because I, I really <laughs> Cut yourself? No, go ahead. <laughs> Keep talking. Um, the battle system, the combat system is actually really interesting. Um, it's 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 a turn-based combat system, much like any other RPG. Uh, but it's it's almost like a chessboard. So you you fight on this grid, 
and each character has the ability to move like two to three to four spaces depending on what uh, you know accessories they have equipped. Uh, your the enemies also have limited range, and then uh, also each character will have the ability to attack in different ways. Like I don't know, say uh, someone who's considered to be a brutalist, like um, I guess Cartman is would be a, considered a brutalist. He's the coon, of course. Uh, can only attack like in a square like right adjacent to him, mm -hmm. whereas uh, Stan, who uses a lot of accessories and tools, he can heal attack like both in front of him all the way across and and behind him all the way across. Kind of like almost like a rook would go like back and forth on a chessboard. Um, but I just thought it was really interesting because they put a lot of time into into developing that combat system. And for a game like South Park, mm -hmm. I mean, people aren't playing it because they want to have an interesting combat system. But they really put the time into it. I really appreciate it. And it made it a lot of fun. Um, a lot of it is turn-based, um, so you, you can take your time with things. But there were, all, there were a few battles where you, it, there was time involved. Uh, so, like, if you didn't act in a certain amount of time, you'd be punished for it. And that's kind of where those farting things would come in handy. You could uh, use your new kid's farting powers uh, to prevent other uh, the enemies from taking turns or uh, you could actually steal their turn in, in some instances. So I really appreciated that and it, ma it made the game interesting to actually like in terms of like just exercising your mind a little bit and, uh, and in between actually laughing at the game. Uh, just wanted to run down a couple of the villains in the game. You battle a lot of sixth graders. You battle a lot of the raisins girls, which is basically the Hoover nice. girls, uh, homeless people, priests, crab people, crab oh. people. Yeah, the crab people come back. They're in Stick of Truth as well. Um, and then a lot of like secondary characters. Uh, you you'll have like minimum. They're, they're they're basically like mini bosses, I guess you would say. Uh, but my favorite battle in the whole game was actually a really simple battle against the PC principal. I think I might have showed that yeah. to you guys. There, it's not really a battle that you're going to win the battle regardless of how you fight him. Uh, but what he'll do is he'll test you on your ability to be PC and analyze microaggressions. Can, 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 can we talk? We're not PC on this podcast. <laughs> Let's get this out there. You'll hear us refer to um, Xbox as either Gay Box, Gay Bone, Gay Box One, Gay Box One. Galo. Uh, Galo for, you know, the Halo games. It's not derogatory towards homosexual people. We love gay people. It's derogatory towards Microsoft, so... <laughs> That's foreshadowing, because I... That's like Michael Scott when he says, uh, you don't call your friend faggy for being gay, you call him faggy for being faggy. Exactly! <laughs> Again, just like South Park. Uh, the episode with the Harley Davidson, right? Yeah. They called him fag. Fag, 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 fag. <laughs> Why is everyone calling us fake? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just an example of uh, how the battle would go. So basically, he would say something, and then you have the option to either hit PC principal or just ignore PC principal, and you progress in the battle if you hit him at the appropriate time. When he uh, did a little when he said sentence. a microaggression. Yeah. <laughs> so what? For example, he would say, "My pants are warm," and if you pressed X to hit him, you would get punished for that. But the next one, he would say, Mr. Yamashiro is actually a very good driver. At that point, that would be considered a microaggression. Yeah. And he would say, <laughs> he would say that the, the microaggression is that it actually infers that other Asian Americans are not good drivers, and the use of Mr. is offensive to persons of third gender. <laughs> What's a third gender? Microaggression! <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> What's that third? You're being intolerant. No, no but... Sir. Okay, okay, like... like we're, we're breaking the fourth wall. What the fuck is third gender? It's like uh, trans, or how they identify. So you could... Well, how is that a third gender? It's only male woman, male, male female. But there's gender... There's one more, which is... Which is, I could be whichever one I want, however, depending on feeling. Or you could be neither. So that's two more. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Is this your first time dealing with this? I mean, that's why I took my fucking kid out of um, public school. No, no, no. <laughs> all right, I, I think we're... All right, continue. We're just... Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, a couple other combats. One, one last thing. I took my kid out of public school because 
he accidentally called a he who was identifying as a she that day a he. Wait, how old is it? How old was this kid? Uh, freshman high school. Okay. And um, Sam got sent to the back of the class because he didn't know which one they were identifying as, and he got in trouble for it because okay. they have something in their IEP um, called that they'll get triggered if they get called the wrong gender, and they're allowed. What's an IEP? It's a individual uh, education plan for a kid. Like they get special rules. Okay. Like if you're autistic and things like that. <laughs> and um, he, got, the kid got triggered, and they're allowed to get triggered in this school. And they sent Sam to the back of the class, and so I was like, "Fuck that! I'm taking him out to private school." Wow. Or he's doing homeschool now. So. Right. 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 And the thing is, is he, he is autistic. I did I talked to about a little bit in the past, but he is very antisocial, and it gives him panic attacks to go out in public. So him being there was a big deal, and he was actually trying to put forth an effort. But then when all that crap happened, it just he just lost lost faith in humanity at that point, and so did I. So can you bring back something to drink? Yeah, it's okay. You can't really sneak away. We're on film. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll finish up uh, yeah. what I was talking about with the South Park uh, fractured butt hole game. A couple of the, the other combats that I both found difficult as well as amusing and interesting uh, were the battle with mutant co- cousin Kyle. That's the super Jewy uh, cousin uh, of Kyle Ruflowski. Uh, the other combat was the combat with the woodland critters. They're the critters oh. that are on like the uh, Christmas episodes, uh-huh. and they're like possessed by the devil and shit. Yeah, <laughs> that that battle was really interesting because you're when you get placed into the battlefield, you actually start right in the middle of the battlefield. So there's critters on the left side of you, kind of like a pincher attack, oh, man. and there's critters on the right side of you, and you're getting dominated. But then Santa will drop down out of the heavens. You have to pray. And then Santa will appear. Okay. <laughs> and he'll help you out during the combat. It was really fun. Uh, so just in summary, I'd give the game about an 8.5 out of 10. Cool. Uh, fun game. Characters were awesome. Cartman's hilarious as usual. A um, lot of props to them for developing an interesting combat system. If you are a fan of South Park, I'd highly uh, recommend that you play the game. If you're not, then you might not enjoy it as much. It, it'll be fun, but you probably won't get a lot of the jokes. But if you're a fan of South Park, it's, you definitely have to play it. Nice. I'm going to be playing that. What the fuck? <laughs> we really can't fucking pick and choose when... Yeah, sippy cups? <laughs> There's a glass right there. It's dirty! That's my glass. I would have accepted well, that. I came prepared with my Del Taco. So speaking of superpowers, conventional versus non-conventional powers. If you had the power to have a conventional superpower, what would it be? What's that mean? (laughs) Something that would benefit you in the long run that's not just flying. Can you give me an example? Like me. The most overlooked superpower, Storm. She could change the weather. Oh, fuck. I was thinking about that Boom. yesterday. Boom. No more fucking summer in Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> no more electric nice. bill for ACs. <laughs> it would be raining cold all day in Sacramento. 24-7. Except when we have events planned. Of course. So that was that's it. Would just be cloudy, because I, I, my friend and I at work were talking about this superpowers. I asked him what he would, just you know, a whim. What would you have a superpower for? He said invisibility. And I said, what would you use that for? He said, I would be in every single high school gym girl locker oh, room. What the fuck? Man, that's disturbing. <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> 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 of course, he had the stipulation that it would only be of at, of age girls. But he said, "Do I get to wear clothes?" I said, "Why would you get to wear clothes? Uh, you're, you have to be naked, and your clothes aren't invisible, just your body." So he was kind of skittish on that point. <laughs> so he wanted to be clothed in some parts. And I said, "Look, we'll come up with a compromise: shroud of invisibility." That way he's clothed and invisible. So 
so what say you on superpowers? What's a conventional one you would like? No one would ever think to change the weather, but that would be so nice to have. Yeah. You could fly on the wind. Uh huh. You could make it rain. So what about you? I don't know. That sounds pretty tight. <laughs> what do you mean by conventional versus like super? Like being able to control the weather sounds like a superpower to me. Yeah, it's super, but <laughs> it's not something you would actually like. People automatically go to flight. They go to invisibility. They go to healing factor. Super strength. Yeah, so I'm so guessing like little little known overrated superpower underrated superpowers. Underrated. That's but, what you mean. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, morph. Okay, so like mystique, yeah. change into different people. Change in, yeah, change your body type to whatever you want. You could be the bank manager and walk in and walk out with money. <laughs> okay. Are you dishonest? Yeah. <laughs> you kill people dressed up as someone else. That's actually a pretty good one. If you wanted someone snuffed out. Oh, man. That would come with a lot of responsibility. Naja, my daughter, and I were talking about dictatorship and... She was saying, like, if I were a dictator, I would be a good dictator. I said, <laughs> that okay, that could be true, but the more power you get, the more unresponsible you'll probably get. Yeah. And she said, what do you mean? I said, okay, give me an example of what something you would do if you had pure dictatorship over the United States. She said, I would make it so people who litter the oceans have to pay a fine. I said, okay. That's that's how it is now. How do you enforce it? She said, I would put surveillance cameras everywhere. Then she said, wait, but then there's no privacy. I said, exactly. So what are you going to have? People littering or people with no privacy in a public place? She said, I'd just be too wishy-washy. I can't be a dictator. <laughs> she said she would be too soft and then too hard, and she wouldn't know what to do with with the power. So... I, so yeah, I could see that. I like mind reading. I think that would Ooh, be really good. You poker. would use that in poker. <laughs> Probably. Man, you would start off being like, I don't need to use this. <laughs> and then you would get a hand, you would oh, you would have like have the second to second nuts, but then there's someone who had the nuts. You're like, just this once I'll use it on him just to see what he has. And then beat him, you're like that felt so fucking good. <laughs> the next hand, you would do the same thing, and you would just keep doing it. You were like, I got a heck of money now. <laughs> or you could just do the morph power and go get all the chips. You're the casino man. Yeah, but this is, he wants mind reading. Yeah. So we're, we're talking, we're going to see mind reading. What I else feel like you would eventually get caught. Mind reading, though? No, no, no. Be with your morph power. <laughs> <laughs> like if there were two of the same person in the same, in the same vicinity. I'm like, I'm the real person. <laughs> they say, what's your wife's name? <laughs> run away. Then the guy's like, Rhonda? <laughs> no, then you run away and change it to someone else in the bathroom stall. It'd be kind of hard to prove that someone was reading your mind. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I think that's a more um, sneaky, as long as you don't bit, get too, like, yeah. uh, like, Pegasus and reveal your whole plan on your deal. Get, Sloppy like like light in Death Note. Be like, uh, I know you're. I know you um, have an ace and a queen. So let's just <laughs> let's just flip them over. <laughs> and how did you know that? You must read minds. Did you guys know the world is going to end in four days? No, I, I heard about that. Like tie. My daughter Naja told me. She said that apparently back in the Malaysian flight, whenever that thing went missing, mm -hmm. there was. A voice recording found from the pilot that said they're coming and they gave the date March 18th 2018 April 18th you mean yep and they said that it's <laughs> an alien invasion when she said that because she's really the conspiracy theories uh. she loves that stuff when she said I said fuck yes <laughs> I said yes I said my dreams have come true and she said what are you talking about that'd be so scary I said do you know how long I've wanted to fight monsters? <laughs> like, I was so excited, and she couldn't see my vision, but I was all about it. I was like, oh, the, the government's going to give us money to kill aliens? Like in <laughs> video games? In video games? Oh, yeah. 
Like when you kill an alien gold drop? No, they we can't. Well, that'd be cool. You never know. Don't know about. They might have gold blood. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, please let there. Be. And she was like, heck is scared. Like, no, don't encourage. Yeah, this. she was like, don't, don't feed your power into it. <laughs> so I was so excited. She's like, she didn't put all the pieces together at first. She like, I'm missing a piece. And then she had, I had her do her research and come back and let me know what was actually happening. And I was like, then I was like, I'm gonna bring the thing. Okay. And I was like, wait. Oh. oh. Please let there be an invasion. She's like, what if they're powerful? I was like, you never know. Could we go back to the aliens and signs that are going to die to our um, sicknesses? You know, they died because they couldn't handle our environment. Right. So, I'm like, please. I'm, I'm four day countdown. Four days. <laughs> Top five? Let's do it. So we were trying to bring you guys a special top five here. We were kicking around tons of ideas, and what's the top five we chose? Uh, top five games that have urban environments. And why did we choose that? Because we thought we were going to be an urban area. <laughs> <laughs> Alameda is not an urban area. <laughs> yeah, it's like five, three minutes from Oakland, and yeah, and. There's a little strip of uh, land that separates the water from the island where the urban people can't go over because they're afraid. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we got for you guys. <laughs> now, I'm going to be truthful with you guys. My top five is a little lackluster from Razor Ramon. From, <laughs> from the game show I put together, so please excuse that. Um, with the top five. It's okay. We, we always do um, like a consensus top five, so yeah, we can make up for it at the end. Yeah, I'm gonna start. Okay, my number five not only takes place in urban areas. De someone define urban area. Oh, it's like a, a inner city metropolitan area, um, like Detroit. When I looked up urban, it said any a city or a town. Okay, so. Not only are you in cities and towns in this game, but your not your main player, your main guy, your character wears a turban. Urban and turban. Dark. <laughs> the game is Dark Cloud for PlayStation Two. I knew you were gonna put this game on the list. Why? I just knew it. Because you get to build towns. You get to build towns. <laughs> and it's like a tie. The games I tried to play. Okay, so I've explained it before. It's been in my top five, a few, uh, one, at least one other time. And this game, a genie comes and takes all the townspeople away on every town on the planet, and you have to go into randomized dungeons, find the townspeople, their houses, and put it back together in a way they seem favorable. So some people will want to be by a waterfall, so you build the town, put a waterfall, then put them next to it, and they'll be happy. And you have to meet everyone's needs in a certain amount of space. Love this game. Cool. All right. I'll go. All right, my number five is a classic. It might show up on uh, your guys' list of what as well. I went with Final Fantasy VII, uh, released in 1997 by Squaresoft for uh, the original PlayStation, uh, commonly considered to be one of the greatest RPGs of all time. Uh, the game has great music, great characters, uh, great story, and a great setting. Uh, the first few hours or so of the game takes place in the city of Midgar. Uh, Midgar is basically overrun by Shinra, this powerful electric government run company that's basically destroying the earth by sucking up the, the live stream and creating Mako uh, and just killing the earth for their own profit. Uh, I got got into this game late. I probably played it like 2005, 2006 and it had been out wow, like 97. Yeah. Uh, but I never even actually owned a, or, or the original PlayStation. I actually played it on PlayStation 2. That's about the time when I got my PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's my uh, number five. Uh, Midgar is an awesome town. Uh, you come back there later in the game, but yep. basically the whole intro to that game is all in Midgar. Everything's really dark, very industrial. Uh, you see a lot of like propaganda posters posted all, all over the city. 
So yeah, that, that, that was, was a good, good one. That was my honor. It was an on, on, honorable mention for me. Um, I remember in the beginning you have to dress Cloud up as a woman for <laughs> Don Corneo, and you could give him a sexy wig. Um, so he's a third gender. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and there's a chance if you put everything right together, he could actually pick Cloud and to go in the back room with him because oh, wow. he has to pick between him, Tifa, two big obvious reasons, <laughs> and Aerith. And uh, yeah, if you dress him up right, you, he'll call him in the back. Nice. It's actually pretty funny. I don't think I've ever seen that. That's, I'd be interested in seeing that. I guess I'll um, go just, I had a little blurb about it. Um, because you ever notice how, like, there's always a Chuck E. Cheese in the ghetto? Or, like, urban areas? <laughs> <laughs> a place people could go to forget their problems and stuff? <laughs> what, what's built on top of Old Coral? Fort Condor? Golden Saucer. Oh, okay. So that's like the Chuck E. Cheese of Final Fantasy. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. because like no matter what's going on on the earth, like the weapons are released, you're, everyone's there spending GPs. Yeah, so you yep. can just go there and, sp- and just waste your life away. Play and... on the roller coaster shooting game. Isn't that where the, uh, the Coliseum is? Yep. Get, get the uh, Omni Slash. Yeah. Yep. Uh, my number five, this was originally going to be my number one, guys, until I looked up the definition of urban. <laughs> urban does not mean black or African American. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the name of the company that made the game. You guys have to try to guess it. Nice. Capcom. Final Fight. Street Fighter 2010. Taking place in the fictional Kijuju region of Africa, BSAA agent Chris Redfield and Shiva Olimar are called to take action to eliminate the new threat in the seventh major installment of the Resident Evil franchise. Hmm. Resident Evil 5. It's the seventh installment? Yeah. Zero and... Um, Code Veronica? Yeah. Uh, like I said, Urban doesn't mean black. Um, I've been... <laughs> uh, and, and you, you, how, learn, you learn watching this channel and listening to us. <laughs> So it said in Africa, so I was like, oh, number one right there. <laughs> uh, this game has everything. It's got um, a new virus, the Uroboro virus, which is an offshoot of the progenitor virus. Uh, you don't fight zombies and liquors. You have to take on um, big, giant, what do they call them, witch doctors with big, giant mud masks on. Uh, mm-hmm. like, they're, they're the man genies. Like Mudman. Yeah, Mudman from Samurai Showdown. World Heroes? World Heroes, yep. Um, basically, uh, Wesker, the main antagonist of the game, injects himself with the Orbo virus, and he uh, gets even more super strength and more super speed, and he could actually not turn into a little tentacle monster because he are, actually has a T-virus in him already, so it kind of works together for him. So does it ever explain why he doesn't turn into a tyrant monster with the T-virus? Because he's got special antibodies. How did he get him born with him? No, he injected himself with him. Okay. Because um, he was a scientist with Oswald Spencer and developed the progenitor right. virus. Um, I think that's all I have. Yeah. So does he ever turn into a tyrant in in the five? Yeah. yeah. At the end, he you uh, actually inject him with the another antidote, and it actually makes his cellular structure go crazy, and he turns into a beast. And you have to shoot his head off with a rocket launcher at the end. So that's my number five. My number four, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater franchise. You're skating around. You really did. <laughs> Takes Razor Ramon to a whole new level. <laughs> Tony Hawk is heck of fun. Have you played him? I've watched you play the second one. Oh, man. Part two and three especially. But you skate around uh, different areas, towns. Uh, they're usually themed like there will be... like. Uh, an LA theme, there'll be like a New York theme, a suburban area, which was my favorite because there's a haunted house you could go through. But you get to pick the classic skaters like uh, Bam Margera, Bucky. Uh, Who was the kid in the wheelchair? Wheels. His name was Wheels? Yep. Wheels. And then, <laughs> but you never want to play with those guys. What you want to do is create your own character so that you could power yourself up throughout the game and just 
get tons of stats and just put together strings of tricks that give you millions of points. Like, it, you have to start with a, a trick, and if any time you just skateboard regular or you fall, you end the chain so you can't get any more points until you start the tricks over. And I got pretty good at that game. In part three, there's a secret character. You guys might have heard of him, called Wolverine. Mm, wow. You could be Wolverine in that game. Which his costume look like? Is it blue and yellow? Or yep. Okay. Blue and yellow Wolverine. Nice. And the last level on that game is on a cruise ship. <laughs> oh. and there's there's heck of women in bikinis nice. walking around. You hit them, they're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fun games. Nice. All right, my number four was released by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. Any guesses? Batman. Batman. Yeah, it's got to be Batman, of course. Uh, I went with Arkham Origins. That's the, actually the only one that I've played of the Arkham series of games. Uh, Arkham Origins was released in 2013 for PS3, Wii U, and Gearbox 360. Um, the story of this game takes place in 2009, five years prior to uh, the Arkham Asylum storyline. Um, Batman's a little less refined, a little bit uh, more grainy, I suppose. Uh, in this game, the crime lord uh, Black Mask puts a huge bounty on Batman's head. Uh, so all the greatest assassins in the world are heading to Gotham City. Meanwhile, uh, the other Gotham villains, Joker mainly, are pulling off heights because the law enforcement, who are actually trying, some of them are trying to stop the villains, but a lot of them are actually aligned with the villains because they <laughs> want to get the, they, they want to get that uh, the bounty as well. So that's. That was a really cool aspect of the game. A lot of times you'd uh, run into law enforcement officers and you wouldn't know whether or not they were on your side or if they were uh, That's cool. actually fighting against you. Um, I mean, it doesn't really get much more urban than Gotham City, in my opinion. Very dark. Um, seems like it's never daytime there. Um, some of the cool shots, I remember like um, when you got to use the, the grappling hook. Uh, crossing what would be like equivalent to like the Brooklyn Bridge going from one side of the island to the other or to the to like the mainland I guess you, you basically gra grappling hook onto like one of the little towers and then you just glide all the way across just re really cool to, to watch that you see the traffic underneath you you see the water on both sides of you and then you just see the little huge city just sprawled out right in front of you um, the fighting in that game I thought was really fun. Uh, somewhat simplistic because it was really timing based. Have you ever played any of the Arkham games? Yeah. Um, it's a lot, a lot of combinations and making sure that you're using the right accessories against the right right villains in the, in the, in the right order. Um, but once you got it down, it felt really good just to get it right. I mean, you, I would mess up quite a few times, but then once you finally got, it, got the combinations down, it just felt really good just to have like a perfect combo. So that's my number four, uh, Batman Arkham Origins. And that, someday, someday I'll play some of the other Arkham games because it was really fun. That was a good, that was a good, good choice, Batman. I didn't think of that one. Number four on my list, Company Sunsoft. That bat, that also made Batman. That's Batman. <laughs> Batman for the NES. Right. Um, I had to put Batman on the list like I like you did, Nick. Right. I chose the original NES game as opposed to the Final Fight clone, Batman Returns, or the newer ones. Um, I always loved a good side-scroller, and when they have good controller mechanics built into it, they had you jumping wall-to-wall -wall so easily. Like, And I was seven years old, so it was like so easy to pick up and get the hang of and... Um, you know, throw into the dirts while you're jumping off the gears to shoot the firefly guy down and in the clock tower. It's, um, it just was more nostalgic for me, so that's why I picked that one. Cool. Number three on my list goes by the name Prototype, set in New York City, Times Square. Maybe you've heard of it. Times Square. I've heard of Times okay. Square. Yeah, yeah, New York. Yeah, I'm yeah. familiar. <laughs> so this game you play as Alex Mercer. It's for the PlayStation 3. Oh, okay. Oh, Prototype. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he gets infected with this virus that gives him supernatural powers. And near, you start off by um, killing these monsters. And when you kill monsters, you get to absorb their powers. And once you fight, like huge monsters like the bosses and like mini bosses you'll you'll get even more powers like he'll his arm will turn into a huge blade 
like kind of like the Team 1000, or he'll get two hammer fists and they grow to like sledgehammers and he can beat people up that way. And you unlock different powers. Eventually, you're able to get from one end of New York City to the other without even touching the ground. You fly across rooftops, you hover, and it's just such a fun game. Sounds cool. It sounds kind of like uh, Batman's grappling hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, oh, and you could run real fast, and when you run, you just go right up the walls and keep going up buildings, so you don't have to jump or anything. That's cool. It's pretty tight. Nice. My number three, if I tell you the developer, it's too easy, so I'm just going to say it. GTA V, uh, released by Rockstar Games in 2013 for PS3 and the Gay Box 360. Um... The setting for the game is in uh, Los Santos, which is essentially Los, Los Angeles, uh, in the state of San Andreas, which is essentially California. Uh, the single player story follows three criminals and their efforts to, to commit heist for big money. Uh, the three characters you get to play as are Michael DeSanta, it's like an older white dude uh, living kind of like in the Beverly Hills, ritzy type of area of town. You guys have played GTA 5, right? Yeah, no. Okay. I've seen it. I haven't played it. Okay, GTA Five is a game I just played, maybe like four or five months ago. It was tons of fun, Mm -hmm. and I really only scraped the surface. I mean, I did the story mode, but uh, those games are huge. There's so much downloadable content, and even now, there's like you can play online. People, I think people play it even still, just all the time. I got it for Christmas. Did you? You got you got it. Well, I, I opened it and there was a fucking rap CD in it instead oh, of I GTA V. That. What? So someone from Toys R Us slid it open, put the disc, took the disc out, put it in, and returned it. And Damn. then when Jamila got me my my Christmas present, it was dot GTA V. So I've been wanting to play it, but it's just such an expensive game to this day. It's like thirty bucks. I'm surprised it's not more than that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I and mean, even, I mean, used, you have to, you pay 30 bucks for it, and it's been out for such a long time. There's yeah. so many copies out there, you would think that the price go down, but no, it's still up there. I'll get it and play it eventually, but when it goes down. I think the last GTA game I played was Vice City. That one was really fun. Wow. Was really good. Um, 80, it takes place in the 80s, mm-hmm. got all the 80s music, yeah. uh, strip clubs, pick up hookers, <laughs> get your life back. <laughs> um, what do you mean get your life back? When when you pick up the hooker in the car, it starts bouncing when you go park somewhere, like out, out in the woods. And then as the car is bouncing, you get your life back. Oh, so like hit points. Not like you, you, you your life was stolen and you have to get it back. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, yeah. Jesus style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I mentioned Michael DeSanta. Uh, the other character, Trevor Phillips, is a white trash dude living in a, like a backwoods area of uh, Los Santos and then the third character is a black dude named uh, Franklin Clinton he's in his early 20s he's like a gangbanger and he gets hooked up with uh, Michael because he wants to start getting like more heist type jobs rather than just like robbing banks and shit uh, but anyway I thought it was interesting when we, when we were doing this list like you said I mean a lot of people when they think urban they think black like an african-american and it was really difficult finding games that had any African Americans yeah. in them. So it was really cool that uh, GTA V had a black character in it, and he was basically the primary character. And he, I guess, he felt he fit some of the stereotypes, but he was also well spoken. Um, he was very talented in what he was doing. I mean, all he was robbing everyone, but at least he was good at it. And he was a very good driver as well. He was actually the best driver in the game. That was his spe- each one has like a special ability, like. Uh, with Michael, I think he, he time can stop when he gets in like a shoot at shootouts. Mm-hmm. With with uh, Franklin, time would slow down when he was driving, like trying to mm-hmm. to escape law enforcement and things like that. You know, in Prototype Two, you're the main character is a black guy. Still really? takes place in New York, nice. but they made Alex Mercer the hero of Part One, the antagonist of Part Two. Uh-huh. So I was like, I fell in love with Alex Mercer. I don't want to fight him so that's why i didn't make my list because part one i like the i like the hero so anyway in terms of this being an urban area i mean it's los santos it's los angeles uh you get everything that los angeles has to offer from the grimy ghettos to the ritzy beverly hills type areas uh, lots of culture you'll see a lot of graffiti i mean some of it's prettier than others uh but yeah 
I, this one was different from my first two because my first two were like very dark, but uh, in GTA Five everything's kind of bright uh, and it kind of emphasizes the culture of uh, urban areas. So I thought it was a really fun game uh, and it fits nicely on this list, I think. So when you say he has some of the stereotypes, does does he like if he eats a watermelon? Oh dear. <laughs> does he like get super strong powers? Uh, I I don't think he ever did that in the game, okay. so I can't say. Oh, I, I just you know you said stereotypes, so my mind just went. I wasn't there. I wasn't thinking those types of stereotypes. I was just thinking of the fact that he's a gangbanger and he's black. Oh, and okay. And he talks, you know, ebonics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Yo, bitch. <laughs> Something like that. Weasley, <laughs> Weasley voice. Was it Grand Grand Theft Auto Four that had the mod for the hot coffee mod? Uh, or San Andreas? No, I, I I think it was San Andreas. I know San Andreas was my favorite Grand Theft Auto. Is that when you play the African American guy and if you like eat at McDonald's a lot, you'll get fat. <laughs> you yeah. like get fat and then you have to run to lose weight. Yeah, that's the one that has the hot coffee mod. The hot coffee mod, in case in case you got to know, is you could invite a lady over and have sex with her on your couch. Mm. I saw it on the news one time. My my favorite my reason I like uh, San Andreas is because each territory of the map is controlled by a different gang and say for example this this area is controlled by the purple gang whatever they're called in, purple cobra in this area there's like 15 different sub sub areas and if you kill all the gang members in that area it's like liberating it so you could liberate you could oh, liberate okay. all the uh, areas and get rid of all the gang violence okay that's cool i do remember that, that was a cool feature that gave me right uh, number three, it does. Yeah, okay. Yeah. My number three, Data East. Bad dudes. No. Robocop. Robocop. <laughs> nice. Uh, back in the '80s, there were countless action movies that Brandon and I watched: uh, Predator, Commando, Raw Deal, Total Recall. Uh, list goes on. Conan the Barbarian, Conan and the Destroyer. So much. Speaking of Conan, have you seen the remake? No. With uh, Jason Momoa. Mm -hmm. Such a good movie. I, re I, re I really didn't think I was going to like it, but it's okay. really good. Um, I actually first ran into this game. I think I might have talked about this before. I went on a field trip in second grade to the local Albertsons store. I don't know why we went to Albertsons. <laughs> um, it's a grocery I, store. I didn't go. No, you were sick. Yeah, I was sick. I had to stay home. So I'm, we're walking through the butcher that thinks like cow meat, dead cow. <laughs> uh, they show us where they, they hang the, the pigs and the, the meat, and de they have their own butchery. And we're finally walking past the video games. And back in the 80s, you could rent VHS tapes. And you could rent NES games. None of that fucking Atari shit. Did you ever see an Atari game for rent? Fuck no. No. Nope. Get that shit out of here. No. Nope. <laughs> so, because they knew no one fucking liked Atari except for weirdos, but <laughs> um, I was walking by and I was like, "Ooh, I wonder what kind of Nintendo games they have." Or I could do it in my in my um, second grade voice. Do it. I wonder what kind of video games they have. <laughs> Wobocop. <laughs> I got heck excited about Wobocop. I looked up, I didn't even know they made a game about it. We watched it like 20 times the summer it came out, and we were like addicted to Robocop. And uh, I, I actually went back to, um, this, I hid it behind a video. I uh, went back to the school after the field trip, and I used the secretary, Miss Coons's phone. And I called my mom, and I said, Mom, Albert Sins has Robocop. You need to go rent it. She said, you already watched that movie. No, it's for Nintendo. <laughs> it's behind Predator. And she said, what, what are you talking about? I put it behind Predator so no one takes it. <laughs> and then so she went and rented it, and it, you got to fight Ed 209. Uh, Clarence Boddicker, you went, went, it like followed the movie. Yeah. Uh, first level was the mean streets of um, Detroit. Second level, you save the mayor from the hostage situation. Then you go to Ken Plant, you arrest Clarence Boddicker. Then you go back into the junkyard, that's where you kill him. Then you go back to the OCP headquarters mm -hmm. and you fight Ed 209 for the final time. The best part of that game is we get the Cobra gun. That Cobra gun blasts anything out of the water. Mm -hmm. It's so tight. So that was my number three. Nice. My number two, Double Dragon, classic street em up, street of beat em up, classic beat em up, 
uh, in the mean streets of a made up city. Huh. Yeah. Yep. That's all I gotta say about that. All right. <laughs> My number two is also a classic beat em up. Released by Capcom in 1989, Final <laughs> Fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you could like punch that in there, that'd be awesome. Like when you're editing. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. Put the some high guard. Some high guard. Okay. Pile driver sounds. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the the uh, final fight takes place in the fictional city of Metro City. Uh, you're on the mission to uh, rescue Jessica, who's been kidnapped. Uh, you get the option of playing as Mayor Mike Hagar, the father of Jessica, or Cody, who is the uh, boyfriend of Jessica. Yeah. Uh, you also have Guy, who I think is just essentially a friend of Cody's or yeah, something Yeah, he's, like he's only in the arcade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I only played this on SNES. I played it in the arcade a few times. Like, when we go to Coin-Off or whatever, I'll play it a little bit. But probably have it at Coin-Off? They did, at least. They, cool. they used to. I don't know if they still do. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Um... I primarily played this on the SNES, um, the, the original version of Final Fight 1, uh, with my Uncle Sam, so it has a lot of nostalgic value to me. My, my Uncle Sam passed away, like, I don't know, eight, nine years ago now. So it, it makes me think of my Uncle Sam and the time that we spent together playing uh, Final Fight. In terms of the, the setting, uh, again, it's very, very grimy, um, kind of a lot of underworld themes. Uh, you get to go into, like, the subway, you're at, a lot of the game actually takes place on the on an actual subway train. Uh, that's always a fun level. Somehow you get into like a fight club type thing when you fight Katana or whatever. Like oh yeah, name. Sodom. Sodom, yeah. 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 They changed the name to Katana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it, I think, again, it fits, it fits in well with uh, this theme. So yeah. My number two. Cool. My number two, the company that made it, Majesco. <laughs> Ooh, never fucking heard of that. <laughs> is that the um, logo with like it looks kind of like a shuriken? No. Oh. I'm thinking title maybe. What yeah. is it? Double Dragon Neon. Oh yeah. Nice. That's uh, a cool game. That's such, it's a remake of Double Dragon. They did they gave so much fan service to this game. Uh, it's got bright colors, great graphics, various weapons. Uh, the Cyclone Kick comes back. The music is heck of good. The music is yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, you get to see classic characters return like Linda, Abobo, Roper, Billy and Jimmy, and countless Williamses. <laughs> uh, new bosses come out and emerge like Bimmy and Jammy, the mutant uh, de- defects of Billy and Jimmy, and Skull Mageddon, one of the he was my number one boss uh, on the the boss fight um, episode we did. Um, I, w- I really would have liked to seen the whole Shadow Warriors return, like the um, original story, but I do like the way they, they took it. Um, way Forward makes some awesome remake games. They're, they did the DuckTales, they did this one. They did another one, too, that I was really impressed with. Oh, they did, like, a Blood Rain game. I didn't like that one, but... Yeah. Uh, you guys should check it out if you guys can find it uh, on the eShops. It's really fun. Nice. Number one on my list takes place in Washington, D.C. Is it Fallout 3? Oh, I'm sorry. Boston. It takes place in Boston. Fallout 4? <laughs> Fallout 4. <laughs> nice. This game, I've put in uh, 200 and something hours into it. I just love it. I love when a new Fallout game comes out. My wife doesn't because... I'll pretty much play it from the time I get home until it's time for bed. And then on the weekends, don't even ask what I'm doing because I'm playing Fallout. Um, Fallout 3 was amazing, but Fallout 4 took it to a whole new level. blew it out of the water. Now, I do like Fallout New Vegas a ton, but there are just so many bugs and glitches with that game. It's hard to really get into. And there's level caps on Part 3 in Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. So Fallout 4, no level caps. You could spend your um, points however you want. There's so many upgrades, so many different weapons, legendary it's, it's weapons. It's got a challenge, too. The yeah. Hard, you know, the hard difficulty is challenging. And I, like that. I downloaded all the new content recently, and I went to go play it. But I was so lost. I, was, I have to start a new game. Yeah, if that's I, what I had to do. If I want to play my, my uh, downloaded content, I'm going to start a new game. Start fresh and just keep playing. There's only one 
flaw, and that's why I didn't make the list, is if you play it on survival mode now, you can't fast travel. Yes, that's true. So that, that I had to go from survival yeah. to, was it very hard? Mm-hmm. Whatever the, the one before that, because you need to fucking fast travel in that game. Fuck yeah. The map is huge in Fallout 4, and they're, like, not, okay, it's fine to not be able to fast travel if you don't have a life, but if you have a life, <laughs> and you only have a limited amount of time you can play a video game, yeah. it helps so much, yeah. fast traveling. So that's my number one, Fallout 4. Cool. I haven't played it yet. I've played Fallout 3. Uh, I have Fallout 4 sitting right next to my PS4 waiting to be played, but I know it's going to be a huge time suck, so I'm kind of waiting. I'm holding off on it. you got to take two weeks off work. <laughs> All out. <laughs> <laughs> Just quit. <laughs> Melissa know. could be the breadwinner for a little bit. <laughs> uh, my number one kind of goes off the charts a little bit. Uh, it's, it's a game that I doubt either of you ever played. It's a game called NBA Street. Do you remember this game? I, I remember seeing ads for it. Really? The guy with the big afro? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The ball. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. Uh, it was released in 2001 by EA Sports for PlayStation 2 and GameCube. Uh, they had all 29 teams that you could choose from. It's kind of like an NBA Jam type game where it's um, it's it's three on three as opposed to two on two like NBA Jam is. Uh, it's full court, but you have like super abilities like you can ju- jump super high up into the sky and do all sorts of cool dunks and shit like that. Yeah. I, I don't know. In fact, I bet against them having the ability to get do the on fire thing. Uh, no fouls. Uh, there was goaltending though. Um, so the thing that was cool about this game was that uh, they had like instead of being on fire they had like what what, what they called game game breakers and it would there would be like an internal scoring system that would keep track of like your style points almost like if you threw down a crazy dunk you get you, your bar would start filling up if you blocked a shot if you stole the ball if you threw a nice assist or something like that and once your bar got filled, filled all the way up, you could do a game changer or a game breaker. And it would actually, it would like, you'd, you'd do some sort of spectacular play and it would like, you, it would like basically demoralize the other team and they'd actually have uh, points taken off the scoreboard oh, wow. for them. So it was, it was actually a really cool feature and it truly was a game breaker or a game changer. Um, so I spent a lot of time playing this game in the early 2000s. I've always been a big basketball fan, so this was really perfect for me. Uh, Kind of like I said, like NBA Jam, but I think they really did bring it to the next level. Um, but I, in terms of it being on this list, uh, I, I put it number one, mostly because it's nostalgic for me. I have a lot of good memories playing this with uh, with a lot of my friends, but also because it actually features some realistic uh, basketball courts that are uh, well known among the basketball community. Uh, most noteworthy would be Rucker Park in Harlem. Uh, they also have ports from Venice Beach, uh, Broad Street in Philadelphia, Yakutomi Plaza in Los Angeles, and Beacon Hill in Boston. So they they actually feature a lot of the same stuff that's a- actually on those courts, and you, uh, they are actually really recognizable. The fact that they put that time in there and they made it tr- look like the true urban environment that, that they're trying to uh, show is really cool, so made by number one. I played that game once. Yeah? With you. Probably. And I fucking sucked at it. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what the hell's going on here. And I lost horribly. And I was like, I don't have this game, so I can't get good at it. Um, my number one? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, on the show before, we've said, you can't really ask someone what your favorite video game is, your favorite movie. Food, you could kind of get away with, but it's like, you can't say one thing's your favorite. But I could definitely say this game is in my top 10 all-time favorite games, if not top 5. It was made, made by Nintendo, and takes place in Eagle Land. Earthbound. Oh, nice. Yeah. Modern day RPG, uh, you, take, you hit the streets, uh, collect yo-yos, baseball bats, fighting Frankie in the arcade to um, get into uh, access to the little milestones that you get. Um, from going to want, Two side, three, four side. No, it's the Tucson. Three, four side, 
Forkside was probably one of my favorite parts in the game, even though it was frustrating when you had to go to the dark side. Hella frustrating. Because you have to talk to certain people and transport all over to find the right place to go. And the enemies aren't easy in that area. No, they're not. They're hard as fuck. But that game, uh, I instantly fell in love with it when I found the book, the, the huge manual with the scratch and sniff stickers, and uh, just playing through it. I played through it like when I, we were playing it, doing the pod last few years ago, and it's like, I'm going to start playing it again because it's that good. So yeah, Earthbound, yeah. Earthbound's my number one. So I just started playing that game, like literally just started, I'm like maybe an hour into mm-hmm. it. And it starts off with uh, Ness in his bed, and he's awoken by like a, a meteor crash down to the Earth. Yeah. And I think the name of it's like Giet or what? Gygus? Is it Gygus? No, it's not Gygus. Gygus is the name. I'm talking about the town that he lives in. It's Want. Or O N E T E. Is that what you said? O N E T T, yeah. Right, that's it. I would not have pronounced it that way. Yeah. It looks like On It, but they do 1, 2, 3, 4, so I say Want. I pronounce it as one, because one, one, two side, three, not two side, two sun, three, four side, one, two, three, four. Okay. So that's how I just pronounce it. And that's all the, so want is like a suburb of Eagle Land then? Yep. Oh, okay. That's where yeah, I was Eagle Land's the, the country. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's where I was getting confused. Yeah, because they don't say Eagle Land in the game. I just looked it up and saw that. Okay, I was like, place. what's Eagle Land? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So do we want to do a consensus? Is it even worth it? Our lists were all very different. I don't think any of us had any repeats. Yeah, we didn't. <laughs> I don't think it'd be a... I don't want to fight it. Fight, fight it out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did have some honorable mentions, though. No, what was the dishonorable that you were talking oh, about? Oh, dishonorable. I'll do that after my honorable. Okay. Okay. Honorable mentions. Um, combat Tribes for the arcade. Um, I didn't put the SNES port. Have you played Combat Tribes? No. It's like Final Fight, but with four players. Okay. Um, you they have more advanced moves. You could do a sorrow swing. You could go by someone swinging around. Nice. And it's more cartoonish. It's more cartoonish. Like I can't think of the graphics what you would like in them too. Yeah. Maybe Final Fight mixed with Simpsons. Maybe some some, but more on the Final Fight side. Um, Super Mario Sunshine. Now, mm. here's a stipulation. The Mushroom Kingdom, you hardly see any urban places. However, the, the Pianta race are clearly modeled after the Jamaican race, Mon. <laughs> <laughs> the guys with little trees on their head. Uh, it it, it, it um, provides release from the hot sun, Mon. So that was my other one. My honorable mention was Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, I, I, that game is so I never played fucking that. fun. Oh my goodness. It's for the Nintendo Switch, right. and holy cow, I fell in love with Mario all over again with this game. I played it nonstop for like a month, got all the little moons. There's little moons you collect instead of stars in each, in each town, right. and there's 900 moons you have to collect. Wow. And I collect, oh, it's so fun. Like you, you don't feel like it's a chore, except one level. It's level two when you're in Mexico. It's not Mexico. It's like modeled after Mexico. Right. Do they have a sombrero? The people are skeletons, like Day of the Dead. Okay. And they have uh, sombreros with little things hanging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they have uh, little vendor carts. Uh-huh. They have. It's all take place in the desert, and in each level you have to dress up Mario to enter a special area. In the in this particular level, he needs to wear a sombrero and a poncho, and you get the um, different. Um, Outfits from the store, so you could does it does he get a dirty Sanchez? Oh, he, he already has a mustache So <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I asked <laughs> Isn't that what dirty Sanchez has a mustache? No You never heard of dirty Sanchez Sanchez? It's a mustache and he has one <laughs> Do you want me to tell you the definition? <laughs> what is it? It's when the, the guy um, Gets done doing anal and he has shit on his penis and he ri- wipes it on the woman's upper lip. How do they come up with this? <laughs> you never heard of Dirty Sanchez? I've heard it. Like people like, oh, like Gay Box Tim will be like, oh, Dirty Sanchez. And I'm like, oh, he has a mustache. So what? <laughs> it's a shit mustache. <laughs> oh, man. That makes it a little bit more funny now. Total shit mustache. So in, in each area, in each level, you... Um, you could buy outfits. You get one outfit you pay coins for, 
another outfit you have to pay special coins and each level there's special coins so like in Mexico there's like purple coins you have to find and you know what my favorite outfit is when he goes to fucking uh, New York City, oh, he gets a fucking American flag outfit. Oh, oh wow. And I wear that shit everywhere. <laughs> I, it was so fucking tight. <laughs> but uh, New York City is when you see the people, walk, like humans walking around mm-hmm. um, in the trailer. That's where he goes. It's not like it only takes place at yeah. just one little town. Yeah. And it's so amazing. That's awesome. It's so fun. Um, another honorable mention, Castlevania Lords of Shadow Part 2. Oh, I was going to put that on my list, too. It didn't make it because I like my Castlevanians medieval. Mm-hmm. It takes place in the future. Um, Meaning, like, 2000s? Yeah, and it, it's uh, more uh, modern. Uh, it's still a fun game, uh, but Part 1 was way better. Yeah, and Part 2, you, like, go back to the castle, kind of. Yeah. And, but in, in this premise... Um, have you played, you haven't played Lords of Shadow, huh? Mm-hmm. Plan on playing it? I will on my Okay, you yeah, have <laughs> the story. Okay. So, my dishonorable mention? Yeah. Uh, I had total disdain for this game. When I, I, played I it. thought it was going to be Combat Tribes for some reason. I had an inkling you were going to play it. close. Uh huh. It was Final Fight. What's oh, that? For Super Nintendo. Bitch. Because when we, it, it's because we had the bar raised so high. Like, when we played it at the arcade, we're like, it's coming to Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. We don't need quarters anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we can beat the game. And then when you pop it in, it's got dumbed-down graphics. There's no guy. And there's no two-player mode. The two-player mode is what killed it. The two-player mode sucks. And it's funny because when you saw, we saw the... I remember clear as day seeing the little coming soon in the, in the Nintendo Power. It was an EGM. EGM. It said Super Nintendo... Final fight and had Hagar doing yep, that. Yep, he was doing his roulette. And I was like, Mom, we have to get this. You're <laughs> buying this for Christmas for us. And, oh, yeah, I mean, we got it. I can see that. And that's, that's, the, I, it, it yeah. just had a sour taste in my mouth the whole time. I mean, I played it, I don't get me wrong, I played it for hours and hours and, and beat it multiple times, but just that initial, like, ugh, just like, it, it, it ruined it for me. I hear you. Yeah, the, the the lack of a two player. That's what we were most excited it's about. It's really disturbing. I yeah. don't know why they would ever consider taking that out. Maybe they wanted to pre- protect the arcade so people will go play that still. I guess so. They put they put it back in for a, a Final Fight Two. I yep. was playing that last night. There was a two player. Option. It's because they didn't know the limits of the Super Nintendo. It, it was one of the early, one of the first games to come out for it, mm. and they didn't know how it would work two players. Yeah. Mm. So I didn't have any more honorable mentions or dishonorable. Nor do I. We have some jerk of the months though, right? Some jerk of the weeks? Yeah. All right. Uh, I've got three. How many do you have? I have one. I only have one. Okay, so I'll do some of mine. Okay. One's kind of comical, but... So when I went out treasure hunting, Jamila, my wife, went out to visit her sister last month. And I was like, I'm going treasure hunting so hard. And I did. I went treasure hunting like three or four days in that week and a half span. And Karen doesn't like it when I treasure hunt a lot, too. That, that, Jamila doesn't either. That's why I had to do it when she was on vacation. And then she called me, uh, and she was like, what are you doing? I was like, going to Temple. What are you doing that for? Never mind. So it's kind of <laughs> like, she knew what I was doing. So I'm driving down, and I see a Did thrift. she know that we were doing the pot again at that point? <sighs> yeah. Okay. So... This thrift store I go to, it's on Arden, it's for Catholic, the Catholic thrift stores. I can't remember the, like, the official names, but you see them everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I go in there, and holy shit, three fucking GameCube games. Super Mario Sunshine, Ooh. Paper Mario, Wind Waker. Oh, fuck. And then they had a, um, like, a sports game in front of them, because they were, like, stacked in, like, a book. Yeah. And it, they only wanted ten dollars for the sports game. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna win treasure hunting!" So I like, uh, I'm like, w- like looking for help. Like, isn't that so weird? How when you find shit, you like lose your mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because like Karen will try to go with me to Dimple and stuff, and I'm like, like, like she's walking with Logan one day, um, and I'm like, "Yeah, off." And she's like, 
you never stay with me. I'm like, fucking turn around. That's how it was when uh, Jamila went to Denial's with me one time. I had my backpack on. She oh, was man. with Naja. They and they were look looking at, at the dresses. They want to look at everything. And then I was like, what are you doing? And she was like, what do you mean? I was like, this this stuff is going to be here forever. <laughs> my stuff, you have to get to my stuff. Treasure She wrong. said, the fucking junk piles on the ground. I said, yes! <laughs> That's the first thing to go. That's where you find the good shit. That was when I got the two copies of Def Jam, V for Vendetta, and all those games from Denial. So I go, I'm looking at these games at the thrift store. I'm like, Brad's getting the corn dog. And I asked the lady, I said, can I see these games? And she's like, sure. She, she puts down Super Mario Sunshine. $25 price tag. Wind Waker, $25 price tag. Paper Mario, $40 price yeah, tag. That sounds about right. And I was like, you want $90 for all of these games? I'm like, this is a thrift store. And she's like, make me an offer. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm like, okay, hold on. I gotta go to my wallet. So I run out. So I'll be right back. Hold these. And I go out and I'm looking for my wallet. And I had like 200 bucks in it. And I was like, I put, I thought like forty dollars in my pocket, but when I walked back in the store, I took it out and I noticed I had like sixty something. Yeah. So I put in twenty back in my pocket, yeah. and I said, "I've got forty three dollars. That's all I've got." Yeah, Dragon Quest three, that gonna be bamboozled the yeah. guy. Yeah. I said, "I've got forty three dollars," and she was like, "I was like, look, I'm a collector. You don't have the book for Mario Sunshine. I, work with me." She's like, "That's too low." I could give you two of them for $43. And I was like, I can't. Nope. And I just walked out. <laughs> oh, man. So thrift stores that try to charge eBay prices, because that's exactly what they're worth yeah. on if you sell them on eBay. Try to sell it on eBay and don't get people's hopes up who's looking in the case and sees... In a thrift big, store. Yeah. In a fucking thrift store. Yeah. yeah. Where you charge 50 cents for some fucking turquoise jewelry... But you want to charge all this money for these games. <laughs> Second jerk of the month, I've got a script. Naja said, hey, did you see that One Up movie? One Up. And we were, her and I were in the kitchen, and Willie was sitting off on the table, just, you know, sitting there. And she, she said, wait, no, Ready Player One. Did you go see that? How was it? I said, it was good for what it was if you've never read the book you'll love it you'll fall in love with it uh for my my tastes it could have been better but this was after i went up, got over my hate for it because when i left that theater i was so fucking pissed <laughs> I, I, I know i must have sounded like a fucking uh goon talking to nick all the way back to the car about how spielberg did a fucking kubrick and butchered the fucking <laughs> shining and so i said for me there's way too many galo references oh man there's galo references and then willie said there's only one Galo. That's too many. Yeah, exactly. He said Galo, and Naja was heck alive. She's like, she, he's calling Halo gay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was heck a booty ticket. Why are you hitting on Halo? I said, I've told these kids numerous times why I hate Microsoft. And I said, look, they brought online gaming to console games. If you want to fucking play online games, man up and get a PC, don't bring it to the consoles. And then uh, I was like, look, look at all the crap games Microsoft makes. Madden, Call of Duty, Halo. Granted, the first two are multi-platform, but having that Halo on there just puts it over the top. And then he said, um, doesn't EA make Madden? Yeah, but it's multi multi platform. Oh, okay, okay. And he said, "Well, if they wouldn't have done it, someone else would." I said, "We never would know that if they wouldn't have done online gaming. We don't know if we would have online gaming today. So that's why I don't like Microsoft because Dreamcast tried to do online gaming. Yeah, and they, they failed. And they failed. Um, PlayStation Two did with Final Fantasy Eleven, uh, but I think there was also a PC port. Mm. 
there's a PC port for everything nowadays. Like when I see Silent Hill on PC, I'm like, <laughs> so <laughs> he said, well, instead of paying thousand of dollars for an for a PC uh, for a PC engine, you could pay like four to six hundred and play it on the Xbox. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, but don't you have to get Gearbox Live, where you have to get gold and pay monthly to pay it play online for some for a lot of the games but there's some free ones and i said okay that's fine um but what about what if you don't have internet what if you have to get a second phone line installed and all this stuff you know you're just you're just jealous that playstation doesn't have halo oh dude i turned to him and i said you made my jerk of the month <laughs> And then he was like, what does that even mean? And then... Do you want me to close the blinds? It might be nice. Yeah. I said, if you're going to try... Like lower them. Yeah. I said, if you're going to try to be funny, be fucking original. That's like, I don't know, you are, what am I? And like, <laughs> and like, come up with some new content, Willie, really. And then I just left. I was like, fuck this. My third jerk of the month? You all, is that your... Do you have three? Or I have, do you three. have more than that. I have three. Well, why don't you let someone else do? Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'm anxious to hear you. Okay. I'll I'll do mine real quick. Okay. Hopefully we don't clash here. Okay. Um. So my jerk of the month might might, might catch some heat for this one, and especially on the urban episode. Oh. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. <laughs> so I split season tickets with uh, Maddie G. Uh, he's been on the show a, a few times um, for the Sacramento Kings. I split season tickets for the Sacramento Kings with Matty G. Uh, on March 22nd, I went to the the, the new Golden <laughs> One Center, watched my Sacramento Kings play the Atlanta Hawks, uh, one of the very few teams in the NBA that I actually have confidence that the Kings could actually beat. Yeah. I was pretty excited to see the game. Instead, I arrived to find a chain of individuals beyond the security gates blocking the front doors. All of them led by some clown shouting, Say his name! Say his name! Say his name. Yeah. If you know anything about Sacramento news, you've probably heard that a young black man by the name of Stephon Clark was shot and killed by Sacramento police officers re recently. I I don't really want to get into like how or why he was killed. It's because he ran and he had a cell phone <laughs> gun. I'm not getting into that. <laughs> Like, they're like, freeze! And you're like, <laughs> you have a black thing in your hand. Why are you going to run and, like, try to run away with a, a gun-looking thing in your hand? You're... Because <laughs> of three strikes. Yeah, th if you get a third strike on breaking into cars, you get 25 years in jail. Okay. What, what are you trying to make? What point are you trying to make? He had two strikes already? That's the thing. I, I don't know. Um, I know Matt works with the Stefan Clark's sister. Uh -huh. And someone said, that's what happens when you have three strikes, uh, implying that he's been, you know, having a criminal past. Right. But I haven't looked into his criminal history. Cause I, if I you want to run and risk your life and not go to jail, risk your life. Yeah, we're getting into, we're getting into yeah. politics. Yeah, we're getting into yeah. <laughs> This isn't treasure hunting for politics. <laughs> All that, that whole preface right there was kind of what I'm getting into, but I, I also want to say that I, in general, I kind of support the protesters' cause. There have been too many people who have been killed while black, but I don't even want to get into that. You can protest that, or you can pro protest something else that you believe in. Yeah. Uh, to, to me, I, I wasn't that mad about Mission the Kings game. Uh, like I said earlier, there's uh, the coin-op, uh, the retro arcade game-themed bar right down the street from, from the, the arena. So I just went over to the coin the coin op and uh, had had a few drinks while I actually watched the game and I played some arcade games. It wasn't that bad of an evening. Yeah. As the city of Sacramento actually reimbursed my parking for that evening, and the Sacramento Kings reimbursed us for the tickets. So I'm I'm not mad about it. What I am mad about is what the protesters did earlier. Prior to blocking off the uh, entry to the Golden One Center, the protesters blocked off northbound I-5 at its busiest section during its busiest time of the day. I know, I know that protesters have to cause some sort of inconvenience in order to get their point across, but blocking traffic is just not, it's not okay. Uh, 
you, you know, there could have been any number of parents who were rushing home to pick up their kids. Maybe they were at like a sporting event. Maybe they're at daycare. Maybe they're at school. It's getting close to night. It was like five o'clock in the evening, and it was getting dark around that time. So kids could have been left at there at, at outside at school in the dark uh, because these people felt like protesting out on the freeway. What's even worse than that? I mean, I was thinking about like any sort of emergency vehicles that had to get through there in order to save someone's life. Literally, someone's life could have been lost because these people were blocking the freeway. So that's my jerk of the month: the protesters that block traffic. Uh, regardless of whether your cause is no noble, stay the fuck out of the road. Hold your head and hit people where it hurts in their wallets. I don't like it, but that's that's how you're really going to get your point across. By protesting the King's game, you cost the King's millions to clear the protest and the Golden One Center and to protect the, the Golden One Center. Blocking the arena also got the protesters nationwide attention. They were on all sorts of national media. They, were even, in, uh, they even got into the sports world. So... It got a lot of attention by doing that, blocking the freeway not so much. It just makes you look like a bunch of assholes. So, as much as I hated missing the game, I was okay with it. Just stay out of the road and say his name. Yeah. Um, be safe out there, guys. <laughs> uh, don't run. <laughs> <laughs> My jerk of the moment. Wait, wait. Say you're breaking into our house. All right. <laughs> Cop says, freeze. What are you doing? Freeze. Put your hands up. <laughs> How easy is that, guys? <laughs> How easy? <laughs> Come on. Let's be smart. One more. Drop, 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 drop the object. <laughs> drop your, drop your, drop your weapon. <laughs> Did you have a weapon? It's dropped. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was dropped. <laughs> okay. My jerk of the month actually happened uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, Karen and I, uh, there, there's a place in Rockland called Studio Movie Grill. It's a place where you can sit down, get exquisite food, deliver to your table, and watch a movie. It's fucking good, too. It, that their food. food is really good. It's like top-notch, It's and it's not that expensive either. So we go there, we decide we want to go see some, it was some random movie. We didn't have anything to do that day. It was um, Office Christmas Party. Uh, it was it was the, the prior Did you year. that for free? <laughs> it, we went to, we paid to go see it, and um, it was December twenty third. I had the day off, um, so it was during Christmas. So we're like, you know, we were, we'll go see the Christmas movie. Uh, we get there. Apparently, we bought tickets for this um, pseudo movie girl in Texas. <laughs> not Sacramento or Rockland. <laughs> you know, it happens. The, the, the manager there, he said, oh, this stuff happens all the time. Here's two free passes. Uh, come back whenever you want. Watch a movie. All right, cool. So we leave. We go eat Chevy's. Uh, we're like, you know what? We're going to go back and try to see Office Christmas Party again. It's January 3rd. Uh, there's, we had the whole theater to ourselves, and we're going to use our tickets. And we go up there, and there's this black girl um, sitting there. She looked like uh, Naomi from um, WWF. And she and th she worked there? She worked there. Okay. She was concession. Uh, how can I help you? We want to use these two tickets to go see Office Christmas Party. Um, choose our seats. There's no nobody else bought tickets for it because the movie sucked, apparently. And so we give her the free passes. Oh, these expired December 31st. Oh, no. I said, oh, no, we talked to the manager. He gave this to us and said, come back whenever you want. So she said, let, let me see if I can get him. I said, okay. Now, me, I don't like, and Brandon knows this, I hate confrontation. Um, unless it's a, with a family member or someone I know, then I could be confrontational. But it takes a lot for me to get angry and confrontational. <laughs> and foreshadowing, I almost turned into the fucking Hulk. <laughs> So she goes and gets the manager, who's jerk of the month, Adam, <laughs> does not deserve this last name, Kennedy, uh, from Leon Kennedy. Right, right. Uh, so his fucking manager's name, Adam Kennedy. Could you, I guess he was on top of the roof trying to fix some lights. I don't know. But we dragged him down, and we're like, dude, you gave us... It was the same guy that, who gave us the tickets. Said, you gave us these last week, and said we'd come back anytime and watch a movie. That fucker, I don't know if he was irritated... Or had a bad day but he 
his face turned into fucking Donald Trump's face. <laughs> he had his hands behind his back. A smug motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Oh he said, yeah. <laughs> we can't accept those. And I said, we were here last week, and you gave these to us and said come back anytime. And he's like, what movie do you want to see? I said, office Christmas party, empty theater. I'm sorry, I can't all that. What the fuck? And I said, you're not gonna get. You gave us these tickets. I, like my mind couldn't wrap to, wrap around his whole thought process. <laughs> I don't know if he was pissed that he had come down from the roof, or he was a fucking motherfucker prick, or what. <laughs> I don't know. So we we Probably said the second one. <laughs> the second yeah, one. <laughs> motherfucker prick. So I'm like fuming. I like can't think straight. I'm like I, I go they have booths all along the um lobby. Have you seen have you been there? Right? Yeah. They have booths you can sit down and look at the menu before your movie starts. So I'm like, I need to sit down. I'm like, I think I am I'm, I'm gonna explode. <laughs> I'm like, I need to sit down. And Karen's like, Are you okay? <laughs> I said, No, let's just sit down, let's let's find out what we're gonna do. Has Jordan been working here? No. Yet? Okay. No, he was not working here. So I take a deep breath. And so I decided to try some tactics out on him. I go up there and sit, and I calm down, and I, and I like it took every ounce of my physical being and mental being to calm down. What did he know you were mad? Yes, he knew I, my face was red. So I, <laughs> I, I walk up to him and I said, "This is a negative experience. Do you know that I could go tell probably a thousand million people <laughs> of this bad experience, and they won't come here." You will lose so much business if you don't give us these two tickets to go see Office Christmas Party, which was no seat taken. It would cost you nothing. You would make more money because we would buy food, your delicious food. <laughs> no, I can't do that. And then so I storm out, right? I'm like pissed. I, I'm like, okay, we're leaving. I'm like, Karen, let's go. We're leaving. We're, we, we walk out. And I don't know this motherfucker's name. And I'm like, I've never complained. I've never called anyone and complained before. Because I'm not that kind of guy. It's just not my personality. I, I, I storm out of there so fast. And, and I, I stop and I'm like, I'm getting this motherfucker's name. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call in and talk to his manager. And so I start running back. And Karen's like, Brad, Brad, Brad. <laughs> she like panicking because she saw the look of fucking evil on my face. And I and I ran back. I whipped the door open. Naomi's sitting there. She's like looking at Adam, like all scared. And I'm like charging in there. I'm wearing this same shirt, the fallout shirt. And I'm charging in there. And I, and I go to the counter, and he's and he's still there. Oh, I wanted to fucking punch his lights out. I said, "What is your name? I'm gonna call and complain on you." He said. <laughs> My name's Adam Kennedy. <laughs> it's written on the door out there. I'm the manager. I said not for very long, and I walked out, yeah. and I wanted to, to flip him off, <laughs> but my mind was so boggled and upset. I I threw the door open and I went, <laughs> peace sign. And I looked at my hand and I just walked out and I was like, <laughs> I was so fucking pissed. Karen said, why'd you give him the peace sign? <laughs> like, I meant to flip him off. <laughs> I was so pissed off. So I called, told my whole story. They gave me free tickets. I went back there the next week. Guess whose name wasn't on the fucking door anymore? Oh, nice. Adam Kennedy's name was gone, and Christina Sims' name was put there. <laughs> I was so happy. Such validation. I felt like I moved mountains. That was, it was amazing. Nice. So that was my jerk, jerk of the fucking year, Adam Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hope you're living in a trash can fucking sucking dick for crack. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have glasses? Nope. Oh, okay. He looked like Dante from um, Clerks. Okay. <laughs> you could imagine him puckering his lips and his eyes like fucking closed like Donald Trump. Just from... <laughs> if I could kill anyone, if I had my superpower to morph, I would have fucking morphed into Naomi, cut his fucking throat and left. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> he brought out the fucking Hulk. I was so pissed. <laughs> so my third jerk of the month. 
free speech censorship. <laughs> I I like to go on Reddit from time to time and call out people who are stupid or retarded with their comments. <laughs> now, apparently, in this subreddit that I participate in heavily called DBZ Dokkan Battle, where it's a app on your phone. It's it's a game you play for Dragon Ball. It's the Ball. only mobile game I play. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. And you, you know, you use uh, stones to um, summon characters and you make characters in different, different rarities to uh, SSRs, Ultra Rares, LRs. Yeah. It's, it's a fun game. So, people who are retarded get on, get under my skin. <laughs> so, I get this message, I, I don't, like two, three months ago, that says, you have been banned from participating in DBZ Dokken Battle. You can still view and subscribe to this subreddit, but you cannot post or comment. This ban is a result from several of your comments that violate negativity and shaming rule. <laughs> now, here's an example of my negativity and shaming yeah. rule. Alright. So, like, a week before April rolls around and someone posts a April Fool's joke onto the onto the subreddit and says like in the title like this new character is coming and then you click on it see who the character is April Fool's it's fucking March 23rd <laughs> so I said it's not April Fool's retard <laughs> <laughs> pulling April Fool's jokes when it's not April Fool's is not clever nor appropriate it's not even funny so that's one of the examples they gave me. Uh, the second example was in this game they have like super difficult levels and people are trying to strategize to uh, see like how to beat the, the level, you know, come up with a thing. And someone says, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to mod my game and cheat. So I said, fuck you, cheater. <laughs> I'm the one that gets banned. <laughs> Cheating and modding is breaking a rule <laughs> in the subreddit community of DBZ Dokken Battle. It's like the third rule, negativity and shaming is the fourth rule. So that fool should have been uh, banned right from the get-go. So this guy's trying to glorify cheating the game, and I'm trying to call out that you shouldn't do that. And by saying fuck you, <laughs> cheater. <laughs> and I get banned. Like, it's it's fine. I'll be the martyr of Dokken Battle. But that's just ridiculous. Like, trying to censor the way you talk on the internet is so stupid. And I've gotten pre banned like six months ago for saying some similar stuff. And they're like, we'll put you on a temporary ban. But when I see stupid people. I have to call it out. <laughs> and I was like reading this one comment. I was like, oh, I, I wish I had Brad's login so I could log in and just fucking blast this guy. But <laughs> no such luck. So that was, that's our jerk of the months. What do you think of Billy Mitchell? What I think of him now? He's a fucking <laughs> cheater. <laughs> Let's uh, discuss this. Um, we watched The King of Kong last night. It's a great documentary if you guys ever want to check it out. I'm sure everyone who's seen or listened to this podcast most likely seen this movie because it's such a connection to the gaming community. The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, uh, pits Steve Wiebe and Billy Mitchell um, against each other playing Donkey Kong. And it's a documentary and it's uh, real, it's reality. Uh, fucking dunk, uh, kill screen's coming up, best line of the game <laughs> in the movie. Uh, but check it out, guys. Billy Mitchell... Uh, Three of his scores were taken away because he was cheating. He used a uh, software that allowed save states, uh, a board that could let him go above the total um, possible points. And so it, it's really sad to see how in this uh, movie he's just so adamant about being honest and you got to play in front of people on original machines. And he just... It was empty. I really loved him, like, up until... He was, like, our personal hero for a long time. Up until, like, five days ago when Nick sent us an article of him cheating. Yeah. With him modding. As soon as I saw him modded, 
that made me write down this fucking jerk of the month. Fucking <laughs> censorship shit. So, <laughs> Billy Mitchell, I mean... Come on, Billy. Let's be honest here. So, I was sad when I... I was... I, it, it was a good outcome that Steve Weeby did get the official title of getting the first million point game in Donkey Kong. And uh, I think right now he's ranked 19. Uh, there's people who've been coming out and busting out records too, so... Probably modding... Well, we'll never know. Uh, Twin Galaxies rip ripped Billy Mitchell of his scores, so... Do we know how he got caught? Someone did the math, and uh, there's some algorithm that you can figure out how many points you get on each level, what's the maximum amount, um, based on the original motherboard, and he surpassed it. Oh, okay. So, it just took some digging to do, and they found it out. That, that makes me question his Pac-Man score, if it's perfect game. I mean... That's, that just sucks. Yeah. Now I think we've got this awesome fucking game show to go through. Yeah, guys, I hope you're enjoying this. We're at like two hours, and we still got another game show to do. We still got the punishment. And we already did that. Yep. We sure we, you didn't get your physical punishment. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'm putting the these are the LED leads. I'm putting them on my neck, and I'm, it's going to tie into Brandon's game somehow. It's going to feel so good to dish out that punishment after you put me in so much pain. Okay. And I'll think about Adam Kennedy as I'm doing it. Oh, damn. No. no I, I, I want to keep my nuts. No. Okay. So we've got two game shows for you. Brandon's 8-Bit Corner. Uh, Brandon's 8-Bit Corner. We've got Box Art Trivia. I've told Nick that I'm done dealing with these people at work. <laughs> Originally, when I so box art trivia, I get a person who knows nothing about video games, and I have her describe what the box art looks like. You take the name off. Yeah, I I take the name off so that she can't see that like, oh, that's Mega Man. So then Zelda, <laughs> you'd have to describe Zelda without knowing the name. A shield with a heart, a lion, a key, and whatever. Yeah, so I would. Um, I described it perfectly. <laughs> I would uh, show her these with the I would not Photoshop because I don't have Photoshop. I would snag it to take away the name title and she'd have to guess what it was. She's out of our department now. You guys have snag it at work? Yeah, that's tight. And I like snag it. So she's out of the department. So I tried to get another person to do it, and this person was such a fucking asshole. He was trying to be funny, oh. and I was like. It's only funny when I make fun of you. So don't. <laughs> don't try to be funny because it's not. <laughs> so we, we've got a... I need, I got so so you, you've got two games. I've got two games. Eight, uh, box Art Trivia. And then I've got a second game called the Troll Poll. <laughs> I named it this because I created a poll and I put it up on the gaming forum of Reddit. Or the gaming sub subreddit. And we all know people who post in there are trolls. They're fucking assholes. They're retarded. And th so we've got the troll poll. Uh, there's like 80-something questions. I can't remember how many there are. Um, but we'll get to that at once we finish the box art trivia. So I'll explain all that later. So we need a piece of paper? Uh, yeah, I have a pen. I thought I had pens. Does it have to be pen and paper? Can I just like type it down on my phone? Oh, uh, you can. It's um the um there's some things you want to keep note of in the troll poll, like the first few questions, but um no, we should have pins somewhere. This is a fucking preschool. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have pins in my here's some markers. Markers will work. You have a color preference? Black. Black is good. Not according to your jerk of the month. Ha ha ha. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, I'm going to have you number one through nine. Twice. It's fucking retarded. I couldn't get that thing out for five minutes. Okay. We don't need the shock hook tub. Do no, 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 oh, no, not today. Not right on this one. Okay, one through nine. Okay. And then one, two, three. 
Is it only three because that's uh, how fed up you got? You're like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to describe the first box art trivia. The first nine are all NES. Okay. A goofy mad scientist is getting attacked by virtual goblins. An islander is stealing treasure from a rhino. He's holding a tomahawk. I think that's Cleopatra on the rhino's shoulder. <laughs> islander, huh? <laughs> islander. <laughs> okay, number three. There's an intruder repelling from the top. Searchlights and robots are attacking him. A bald Turk is surprised by a pterodon and club-wielding monkeys. What's a Turk? That's just what you're you asking said? me. <laughs> That's what they fucking said. <laughs> I'm not supposed to interpret this shit. I just. Okay, can you say that one more time? A bald Turk is surprised by a pterodon and club-wielding monkeys. Okay. Ready? Next one? Yeah. A frugal duck is being airlifted from treacherous surroundings. Next one. That little alien is pretty cute. It hugged it's hugging a tree like a koala. Is that Wonder Woman? She's holding up her arm to deflect incoming bat fire. What's the first sentence again? The little alien is cute. Okay. No. Okay, go ahead. This was a movie. Number seven? Uh, yes. Okay. This was a movie, I think. Commando? G.I. Joe? I think he's from the Terminator. I don't know. Next. (laughs) (laughs) This is when I started getting irritated. An ugly zombie has a spider crawling on his face. Oh. Oh, man. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, put put a point on that one. Okay. (laughs) Mega Man is fighting Red Man. But he's not paying attention. He's gonna get blown. And that's how he fucking said it too. I was at a nine out of ten on this, like, motherfucker. I. I... Canceling your Windy City Heat. Huh? Windy City Heat, motherfucker. Uh, was that nine? Yeah. Okay. So the first one. Wait, one, two, and three. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, now we have to go to 16-bit. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot the other ones. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So these are... Super Nintendo. Okay. He goes, Trump versus Bane. And I was like, fuck it, I'm changing people. I said, thank you for your time. This is the answer to number one? Yes. So, there's more to it, because I asked, I said... Get out of here. I'm I'm getting someone else. (laughs) So what do you do? Like, give them emails or what? Or do you go up to them and do you print them out? No, I have them come to my desk and look. Oh, okay. I said, I'm getting someone else. So this is when I change people. (laughs) And then this is what they said. A street thug stares down a commie. A commie? (laughs) Okay. <laughs> There's a knight, green troll, and blue demon. You can't see the knight's face because of his helmet. Uh, 
Alright, High speed race. Blue car versus red car. Red car jumping. Three kids lost in the woods. I, 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 you said one, two, and three. No, one, two, th one through nine twice, and then one, two, three. Oh, okay. Was it three kids lost in the woods? That's it. <laughs> Man with rope getting turned to stone from Medusa, or eaten by dragons. A red-headed monster about to destroy a Chinese lady. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't have a guess on that one. That was seven? No, six. six. He looks like my son on Friday night. He has his pajamas on his head and is holding a magical wand. Oh, and he's gay. Oh, man. <laughs> My boss, the snowman, has his muscle destroy and violate Stretch Armstrong. What the fuck? <laughs> I know this one. I never even played the game, though. Metalheads from the 90s bash and thrash their way through the neighborhood. One, two, and three. This is in 64. Oh, wow, okay. Mario is in the Wild West. Donkey Kong playing Dungeons and Dragons. Forget about Yoshi. <laughs> Number two, that's one sexy fucking squirrel. You know she wants it. The D, my D. Oh, dear. Okay. Ha 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 ha! What the fuck happened to James Bond? Why is he a lizard? <laughs> Okay. One point Five, each. One uh, point each. I need something to keep score with. This? Do you want a piece of paper? Yeah. Okay. So, who knows what the first one is? Read it. You want oh, yeah, I'll read it. Say number one. And number then. one, a goofy mad scientist is getting attacked by virtual goblins. I don't have a guess. I put guy room right. Dr. Mario. He didn't know fucking Mario. Oh, he's trying to be funny? Trying to be funny. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> An Islander is stealing treasure from a rhino. He's holding a tomahawk, and I think that's Cleopatra on the rhino's shoulder. I put Star Tropics. I put Adventure Island 3. It's that. Ooh, it's Adventure Island. Oh, the first one? Yep. Dang it. There's an intruder repelling from the top. Searchlights and robots are attacking him. Bionic Commando? Yep. And I actually just played that game, so that <laughs> is fresh in my mind. Nice. Number four. A bald Turk is surprised by a pterodon and club-wielding monkeys. Karnov? Karnov. <laughs> Next one. A frugal duck is being airlifted from treacherous surroundings. 
DuckTales. I put DuckTales 2. DuckTales. Uh, that little alien is cute. It's hugging a tree like a koala. Is that Wonder Woman? She's holding her arm up to deflect incoming bat fire. I didn't have a guess. I put Metroid just because it's an alien. Rygar. <laughs> This was a movie, wasn't it? Is it Commando? G.I. Joe? I think he's from the Terminator. I don't know. Next. Mm. Predator. I want the Contra. Metal Gear. Mm. An ugly zombie has a spider crawling on his face. Oh, I, I, I listed two options. Um, I'm going to go with Fester's Quest. I put Fester's Quest. Fester's Quest. Good call, Nick. I have Monster Party written down also. Mega Man is fighting Red Man, but he's not paying attention. He's going to get blown! <laughs> I went with the original Mega Man. Mega Man 2. Mega Man 5. 16-bit. Number one. Trump versus Bane. Never mind. Change people. A street thug stares down a commie. Final fight. Final fight. Oh, damn it. I should have known. Tr Trump's not even on there. That's why I fucking change people. I'm glad you fucking change people. Whoever you are, you fucking suck. <laughs> There's a knight, green troll, and blue demon. You can't see the knight's face because of his helmet. I put super bulls and ghost. That's it. Damn. I, don't, I, I guess Spider-Man, but I, it, it was truly a guess. Uh, let's see. I did one out of order on Super Nintendo. Yeah. Okay. Um, high speed race. Blue car versus red car. Red car jumping. F zero. F zero. Also. Uh, um, I think I did this one next. Three kids lost in the woods. I didn't have an answer. I didn't have an answer. Secret of Mana. Huh? That's actually not bad. Yeah. That. Yeah. Then I think if she would have said forest or he, whatever it was. Uh, next one. Man with rope getting turned to stone from Medusa or eaten by dragons. I put Super Castlevania. Uh, I put Castlevania 4. Both are acceptable. Then I think I did this one. A red-headed monster about to destroy a Chinese lady. That's Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2. Oh, nice. Blanca... Yeah, I was a, man. He looks like my son on a Friday night. He has pajamas on his head and is holding a magical wand. Oh, and he's gay. <laughs> I don't have a guess. Uh, Page Master. Kirby Superstar. He's oh. got the um, magical oh. wand with the... Yeah, okay. <laughs> Mob Boss, the snowman, has his muscle destroy and violate Stretch Armstrong. Clay Fighters. Clay Fighters. Oh, nice. I know this one. Metalheads from the 90s bash and thrash their way through the neighborhood. I guess Wayne's World. I guess Beavis and Butthead. Beavis and Butthead. Ah, butt damn it. 64 bit. Okay. Mario is in Westworld. Donkey Kong playing Dungeons and Dragons. Forget about Yoshi. I put Mario Party 3. I put Super Smash Brothers. Mario Party's 2. 2. In this one. I, I, I had to negate his first thing. He said, Mario is flying. Can I be any more clear? <coughs> you see what I'm fucking dealing with? Okay. Super Smash Brothers wasn't even... So Smash Brothers was... It was originally released on the 64, uh -huh. huh? Yeah. yeah. This is one sexy fucking squirrel. You know she wants it. The D. My D. Conquer's Bad Fur Day? Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I didn't have it. Ha 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 ha! What the fuck happened to James Bond? Why is he a lizard? Gex. Gex. And that's... I did not have that. And that's when I stopped <laughs> box art trivia. So you guys said you guys will do it. Feel fucking free because <laughs> people I talked with, forget about it. <laughs> okay, so Brad has 12 and Nick has 4. But there's plenty of game to go. Oh, these are cumulative? Oh, well, that's nice. So. Oh. Oh, so what? Does it look fine? Do we want to um, turn light on or is it still fine? It looks okay. Okay. Now, 
May, maybe we should turn the light on. Okay. I'll explain the game while you guys turn the light on. So, the troll poll. Like I said, I polled people at Reddit. Good. Yeah, that's fine. That's better. I could go higher. Maybe. Yeah, just go all the way. It's good. So, the poll consists of many different sections. Um, what these guys have to do is I'll give them a group of things, and they have to explain, or they have to say what they think the majority of the poll takers advise. Like Family Feud. Yeah. So there's 70 people that took the poll. So, for example, pizza or sushi, you guys would say pizza or sushi. And it's not our personal answer. It's what we think the majority was. And this is on Reddit, so who fucking knows what they said? So, uh, in, in, in this example, you guys would both say pizza. You guys would both get a point. But now we have to go to the part where... You get an extra point if you guess how many people said pizza. Yeah. So if you were to say 45 and you were to say 55, the answer was 60. So Nick would get an extra point. Yeah. Now they are, they are applying the Shockmaster because throughout the game, there will be pulse checks. <laughs> pulse checks, if you get the answer wrong, you get shocked. Oh, man. So they don't know when it's coming. They probably will because I'll be holding the, the shock master. <laughs> and so they better get these fucking things right because they're going to get shocked. <laughs> the length is up to my discretion. Shouldn't be long, though. I don't. I won't do like 10 seconds per because there's a lot of fucking pulse checks. <laughs> so. In each... it with, Throughout the poll, uh, I made special sections so like for instance i'll give one away in the um there's a question that says pick your favorite movie category and then you know i list like comedy drama action horror whatever for like since i'm a horror fan whoever chose horror those people of the 70 got to go to a bonus poll where they answered another set of questions and then go back to where the people who didn't say horror and continue the poll. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. And then, so it'll change. Like, for instance, maybe 12 people said horror, so only those 12 will get to take the poll. So it's not, you guys choosing 1 through yeah. 70 on the majority, it's up to 12. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get a census going. Uh, you may want to take notes on the census. It's basically the demographics of the people who took the polls. So you may want to refer to your census like, okay, this is, you know, so-and-so. Maybe they would have said this based on um, the demographic. Okay. So. Was there any more markers over here? Yeah. In the um, thing right there. Oh, okay. How are you supposed to get this out? Uh, it took me like 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. Question one. Are you male or female? What do you think the majority said? Oh, man. There's We're a lot of writing down the answer? Uh, you guys could say uh, it, It's going to be a lot of writing if we just, you know, blurt it out. Yeah. For the census, you may want to. Uh, just to refer back yeah. to the following questions. Now, Reddit, there are a lot of men that pose as women, so that could play into it. But I'll say, I'll say male. I will also say male. You guys both get a point. What do you think the majority said, or what's the majority? Uh, how, there are 70? 70. So somewhere between 1 and 70? Yeah. Obviously more than 35. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll say... 58. Oh, man. Um, 59. 60. Ah, oh, That's bad. Basically, I basically set a line for you. Yeah, you yeah, did. You got to go over or under. So maybe we should write it down and then say it so we can't change our answer. How do you mean? Like, uh, if you wouldn't have said 59, I probably would have said, like, something else. 
but I did 60 so I could take the majority. What about, uh, we just go back and forth in terms of like who's setting the line? Like over and under? Yeah. Okay. Like I said at that time, you'll say yeah. it next time. Okay. Uh, North American, South American, European, African, Asian, Antarctic, Australian. What's the majority? Um, I'm going to say North America. Me too. So you guys both right. Now, who sets the line? Brad? No, I do. Brad this time. 1 through 70? Yep. Forty-five. Hmm. I'll say over. Over forty-five. Forty-six or higher. Forty-three. God damn it! We're setting good lines, though. Yeah. Best superpower: USA, China, Russia, or Kazakhstan. Best superpower? Like world superpower? Like oh. China. Can you repeat that again, please? USA, China, Russia, or Kazakhstan? I'll say USA. USA. Nick gets the point. 59 people said USA. Why'd you tell us that? Aren't we supposed to sell a line over there? If we get it right, if we both get oh, it so right. I get, I get two points? Because he didn't get it right yet. Yeah, okay. Winter, fall, spring, Summer. I'll say summer. I'll say spring. Brad gets two points. Oh. 30 people said summer. Dogs, cats, bats, rats. I got dogs. Dogs. Who sent in the line, Nick? I think it would be my turn. Yeah. yeah. So we were right. Yeah. Yep. Dogs, cats, rats, rats. Forty-two. Over. Twenty-eight. Oh. Yeah, I got one. Twenty-eight. Twenty-seven cats. Nine for bats. Ooh, cats was right. There. Six for rats. North, west, south, east, or center. <laughs> I'll say center. East. North with 18. Ages. Under 18. 18 to 20. Oh, 21 to 29. 30. Oh, we're still doing demographics? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that, I, I misunderstood the question. That's okay. Okay. Uh, eight, under 18... 18 to 20, 21 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 plus. 21 to 29. I agree with that. That is correct. Get who Brad sets the line or Nick? Uh, I do it. Forty-seven. I'll go under that. Twenty-five. Oh, it's time to get all horned up. We're in the Bradley section. <laughs> Anyone who took the survey that's 18 or older gets asked these questions. <laughs> 60 people got to answer these questions. 18 or older? Okay. Gay sex, straight sex, <laughs> animal sex, or cyber sex? Straight. Yeah, straight. Sex. Who's the what's the who's who's doing the line? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sixty is the max. <laughs> uh fifty-two. Oh man. <sighs> Under. Twenty. What? <laughs> Fucking Reddit, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, what was correct. it? Twenty two, you said? Uh or just twenty. Twenty. What are, the, what, are the, 60? what are the next? What are the other ones? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't record those ones. Okay. <laughs> Boobs, ass, oh, yeah. dick, dat mouth, or feet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going boobs. 
Uh, I'll agree. Boom. Set the set the line. That was correct. That's Brad. Just set the line. Out of sixty. Yep. Thirty-two. Under. Thirty-three. Ah, oh, god damn it! Nice line. Pulse check. Oh shit. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, you guys got them both right, huh? You guys both said, um, <laughs> boobs. We both okay, said boobs. Okay, okay. Nope. You guys survived that pulse check. Oh, man. <laughs> virgin? Non-virgin? Ooh. Ooh. Non. Yeah, I'm going to say non-virgin. That's right. Except the line. Um. 60. Uh. 47. Under. 36. God damn it. Weed, beer, pills, cigars, class one narcotics. <laughs> I'll say weed. Yeah, weed. Set the line. Weed. 48. Under. 30. Raw dog. Oh yeah. Bloody dog. <laughs> oh, no. Bloody dog. Just two options. Connie dog. <laughs> oh, sick. I'll say Connie dog. Hmm. Maybe a raw dog on this one. Raw dog. Nick is yeah. bold. Twenty-three. Ever have an STD? Yes or no? Hmm. People are doing a fucking raw dog. <laughs> No, I'm going no. Ah, you guys passed the pulse check. <laughs> uh, set the line. Uh, Is it my turn? I think it's, it's your turn, yeah. So, ever had a STD? Yes or no? Um, Forty-two. Under. Fifty. Said no. How does semen taste? Good, <laughs> bad, never tried it. <laughs> never tried never it. Tried it. <laughs> Set the line. Um, never tried it. Um, 46. Over. 40. Oh. <laughs> yes. We're out of the Brad section. Oh, man. <laughs> Pulse check, but you guys survived. The next category, num nums. <laughs> Dealing with food and drink. Chocolate, vanilla, Neapolitan, strawberry, Rocky Road, sherbet. Rocky Road, chocolate. Both wrong. Sixteen people said Sherbert. Interesting. That's what I, I fucking thought that was interesting. <laughs> that blew my mind. <laughs> so these are back in the 70s. Yeah. Okay. All demographic. Uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert. Dinner. Dessert. Dinner. Oh. 42. Ketchup. Mustard mayo. Ketchup. Mustard. Ketchup. Ah. 40 people. Mints or gum? Gum. Yeah, gum. Mint. Wow. And that was a pulse <laughs> check. Fuck. Uh, 36 people said mints. <laughs> Or beef stroganoff? <laughs> chicken teriyaki. Yeah, chicken teriyaki. Set the line. 
Oh, turn. It is. I think it's my turn. No, I said it last time. Sorry. Okay. Um, Forty-two. Over. Fifty-six. <sighs> Scrambled eggs. Over easy. Boiled. Poached. Mm, poached is good. But I'm going to go scrambled. Yeah, scrambled. Set the line. Um, Thirty. I'm going to go over thirty. Thirty-eight. <laughs> Cherries, apples, strawberry, pineapple, grapes. Strawberries. Pineapple. Strawberries. Oh. And that was a pulse kick. <laughs> I don't get it right. No. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Did it fall off? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that on purpose, I promise. <laughs> that just hurts. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it hurts hella. Sushi, cheeseburger, sweet and sour pork, chicken nuggets, or pizza? I wasn't paying attention. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Sushi, cheeseburger, sweet and sour pork, oh, man. chicken nuggets, or pizza? <laughs> oh, that sounds so fucking good right now, but I'm going to go with sushi. Pizza. It was pizza. Uh, 43 people. Okay. Entertain me. <laughs> These are things about movies, music, TV, etc. 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 Dragon Ball Have Z or Miyazaki? Have you seen Split? Yeah. Dragon um, Ball Z or Miyazaki? I'm going Dragon Ball Z. Uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Z for this. Demo. Set the line. I used the thirty for I the scrambled it. eggs. Um, and you, this is for everyone, right? Seventy. That's to say who's setting the line. So I'll move it back. Uh, 45. Over. 68. I should have went over. 68. I went higher than that. 68. 98% almost. I knew I should have went higher than that. Though. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Crunchyroll, Crackle. <laughs> Netflix. Netflix. Set the line, Brad. Um... 50. Under. 22. Oh, fuck. Mastodon, Pterodactyl, <laughs> Triceratops, Sega 2 Tiger, Tyrannosaurus. Do you know Dragon Zord? Nope. Tyrannosaurus. Pterodactyl. <laughs> Brad gets two points for Tyrannosaurus. I'm trying, trying to make up ground. Um, 50. Gail Gingit, Kate Upton, Scarjo, or Olivia Wilde? Gail, you mean Gail, Gail Gadot? <laughs> Whoever Wonder Woman is. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Gail Gadot. She's a bit of all right. Her... Kate Upton, Scarlett Johansson, oh, man. or Olivia Wilde? Oh, that's tough. Uh, Scarlett Johansson. I'll go with the second one. Kate Upton. Kate Upton. Gail Gingit, 22. <laughs> Gal Gadot. <laughs> Gingit. Wolverine, Darth Maul, Gandalf, Captain Picard, or Goku? Oh, man, Goku. <laughs> Wolverine. Darth Maul. What? 22. 68 fucking said Dragon Ball Z. Oh movie. shit, that was a pulse check too. <laughs> Did we both get that wrong? Yeah. Oh, fuck, hold on. <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. No! Oh, oh, <laughs> <Dios! laughs> oh. oh, is that needles? <laughs> I don't know what it was. Oh. <laughs> I'm taking these off till we get a pulse check. <laughs> oh. 
It feels kind of good on the head, actually. <laughs> I bet it does. <laughs> uh, Queen, Avenged Sevenfold, Mastodon, Primus, Dead Maw 5, or Dead Mouse. I'd say Avenged Sevenfold. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Avenged Sevenfold. Queen. Oh, wow. 21. Cool. Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan, <laughs> Macho man. Oh, man, Stone Cold Steve Austin, oh. The Undertaker. <laughs> oh, I know they all pick Steve Austin, but I want to say Macho Man so bad. I'll say Steve Austin. I'm gonna go with Hulk Hogan. Undertaker. Oh wow. Um, Brad Pitt. Oh, I'm sorry. Bradley Pitt, Mickey Keaton. Johnny Stamos, Billy Defoe, Jim Woods. What the fuck? Brad Pitt, Michael Keaton, John Stamos, <laughs> William Defoe, or Jim James Woods. Is it William Defoe? What, fucking whatever. <laughs> um, oh, John, John Stamos. John Stamos. Brad Pitt, oh. eleven. That was all over the place. Savage Garden, Sound Garden. Fool's Garden, the Garden Band. All bands with garden in the title. <laughs> Sound Garden. Sound Garden. Set the line, Nick. Um, 30. Over. 50. Damn it. Godzilla, Mothra, Gamera. Oh, shit, Gamera. That's a wild card. I'll say Godzilla. Pulse check, you guys got it right. Uh, oh. Set the line. Um, probably like 59. Ooh. I can't take that over, I'll go under. 30. Yes. Showers. Sitting down or standing up? <laughs> standing up. <laughs> standing up. <laughs> Set the line. <laughs> um, uh, sixty. Fuck, that's a good one. Under sixty-eight. Oh, fuck. what's wrong with these people? <laughs> so you you did the poll twice. <laughs> 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 Best movie category, action, adventure, horror, comedy, musical, drama. Action. Drama. Comedy with 14. (laughs) (laughs) We're in the scary zone. 13 people said horror. So this will be... Based on horror stuff. Yeah, 13. Freddy, Jason, Chucky, Michael Myers, Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> Freddy. Jason. That was a pulse check and it was Freddy. Woo! Uh, <laughs> Seven people said Freddy. How many people said Sarah Jessica? None. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hurt Tom. <laughs> okay. Saw, Insidious, oh. Sinister, The Conjuring, Sex in the City. <laughs> Insidious. Saw. Saw is right. Paul Stark? No. Uh. Dracula, The Wolfman, Mummy, Frankenstein's Monster, Gilman, or The Gilman, or Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> Dracula. Dracula. Set the line, Nick. 13 is I. I know. <laughs> um, six. Over. Four. How do you like to pe- see people die in movies? <laughs> Getting stabbed, ripped apart, 
buried alive, torture, gun, or overdose, like what was supposed to happen to Julia Roberts at the end of Pretty Woman. <laughs> Which uh, is true. She was supposed to die of an overdose. Torture. Torture. Ripped apart. Mm. Ten people. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelming majority. Most nightmare induced scene in a horror movie freddy coming out of the wall in nightmare on the street jason teleporting in front of camp counselors oh man michael myers rising from the dead from being stabbed in the neck by sewing needles from laurie stroud julia roberts and sarah jessica parker eating for apples <laughs> with their hands tied behind their back <laughs> freddy yeah, I have to go with Freddy. Apparently these people love Freddy. Uh, that is right. Set the line. Five. Over. It's five. Oh, no. Hack time, also known as half time. This section deals with hacks and will be a tad controversial. <laughs> like, Can you guys determine the term hack? Like the life hack? No. Oh, no. Like uh, someone who doesn't know what they're doing and they think they do? <laughs> like Kubrick? <laughs> that is correct. Do I get a point? <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> okay. Toad the Wet Sprocket, Semisonic, Deftones, Pearl Jam, or Nickelback? This is to everyone, right? Yes. There's not in the horror zone anymore. 70. Nickelback. Yeah, Nickelback. Uh, Pearl Jam. I didn't tell people this was like hacks. So these are my personal hacks, but people are still choosing what, what they, they like. like. Oh, okay. I thought. So Pearl Jam with 25. Okay. So, so, so this is who that they're choosing, but you didn't. Okay. They're choosing their favorite of these. Not, yeah. Not, not, not who they think is a hack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. UA Bowles. He did such movies as Blood Green, The Third Reich, Postal, Alone in the Dark, Rampage. Rampage 2, President Down. Stanley Kubrick, Lolita, Barry Lyndon, Eyes Wide Shut, Flying Padre. Raja Gosnell, he did The Smurfs, Big Mama's House, <laughs> Never Been Kissed, and Home Alone 3. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, he did The Post, Munich, The Big Fucking Giant, and most recently Ready Player One. Jason Friedberg, he did Date Movie, Disaster Movie, Epic Movie, Vampires Suck, and Meet the Spartans. Tarantino, oh. True Romance, Jackie Brown, and Kill Bill 2. Oh, no. Now, I just gave them the list of directors. Yeah. I didn't give them the movies. Right, right, right. I'm going to go with Kubrick. Tarantino. You guys are both wrong. Spielberg? It was Spielberg, oh, wow. 19, and this has two pulse checks. What? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hold on. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Turn off. I should have just been. Oh. <laughs> okay. What the heck? Just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Okay, that was two pulse checks. <laughs> My stuff fell off. <laughs> oh, I got lucky. That was hurting so bad. <laughs> Coke, Sprite, Fresca, Mr. Pib, Bart's Root Beer, Powerade. <laughs> uh, Coke. Coke. Sprite, oh, 28. Wow. Olivia Munn, Cameron Diaz, Angelina Jolie, Kristen Stewart, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Uh, who was the first one? Olivia, Olivia Munn. Munn. I'll go with her. What was the third one? Angelina Jolie. I'll go with her. It was Angelina Jolie with 40. And that was a pulse check, what by the, the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man. 
Grey's Anatomy, Real Housewives of whatever, This Is Us, Party of Five, Melrose Place, Mr. Ed, MASH. <laughs> uh, this Is Us. Yeah, This Is Us. People love that fucking show. Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah, Grey's Anatomy. 14. I never even heard of This Is Us. I just looked up stupid, um, stupid TV shows. It's a good TV show. But it's still a hack show. Yeah, <laughs> because everyone's like, oh, this guy named Jack is so hot. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I don't even know those people's name. Tupac, Eminem, oh, Pitbull, <laughs> Snoop Lion. <laughs> Snoop Lion. <laughs> Tupac. Tupac. Eminem, mm-hmm. 22. Wendy's, oh, come Subway, on. Panda Express. Smash Burger, <laughs> Fresh Choice. <laughs> uh, Panda Express. That's a good one. Between that and Subway. I need points, so I guess I'll go with Subway. 60 people said Wendy's. What? That's insane. That's a pulse check. Oh. Why do we get a pulse check? Because people are fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> This is, they're trolls. Okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. It started at the top! <laughs> How did you do that? I have no idea! <laughs> it was like boom! <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> I almost pissed myself. <laughs> Still in the hack time. Oh man. Jason Biggs, Zach Braff, Sin Bad, Jerry Lawler, <laughs> Jennifer. <laughs> what was the last one? Jennifer Gardner. <laughs> What's the first one? Jason, Jason, Jason Biggs. Biggs. What's the second one? Zach Braff. Yeah, I'll say yeah, Zach, Zach Braff. Nope. Jason Biggs, 22. Oh, wow. Is that a fucking pulse? You better believe it. <laughs> Fuck. I don't get it. <laughs> what determines that they're pulse? Oh, <laughs> 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 okay. We have to explain this. <laughs> that hurt my fucking feelings. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we have to explain this. When you do the Shockmaster, every time you turn it off and turn it on, you're supposed to go up to a high level. But now it's just starting at the highest fucking level. It's becoming self aware. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> the Shockmaster. Oh, that was fucking torturous. I'm going to tell you right now in the next three, there's one pulse check somewhere. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. George Clooney, Jack Nicholson, Mark Ruffalo, Steven Seagal, Chris Klein, Russell Crowe, Rob Pattinson. Chris Klein. I can't even fucking think. Can you say those again? George Clooney, Uh, Jack Nicholson, Mark Nicholson. That's right. Yes. No full trick. (laughs) Lisa Simpson. Bam Bam Rebel, Scrap, Scrappy Do, Webigail Vanderquack, Lisa Simpson. Yeah, Lisa Simpson. Uh, over under. This is for all seven of you, right? Yeah, yep. Forty, under. Forty-five. Cher, Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Cher, Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna, Miley Cyrus. Those are the four. Oh man. Um, Madonna. Pulse check, and it's Cher with twenty-eight. Oh, what? What the fuck? <laughs> Sixty men, most of them ranging from twenty-one to twenty-nine. Where does Cher come from? Yeah, Mel fetish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. 
Um, uh, John Mayer, Justin Bieber, P. Diddy, Bono, Drake, Bob Marley. Drake. Drake. Bob Marley with 21. These hipsters. Asteroids, Pac Man, NFL Blitz, Marble Madness, Balloon Fight. Pac Man. Wait, you're still in the hat category? Yeah. You. Marble Man is because when I used to play it, <laughs> I used to play, you know, the ball. Yeah. Whenever I do it, it, my skin would pinch would in pinch the ball. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Um, what, what can you read those again? Asteroids, Pac-Man, NFL Blitz, Marble Madness, Balloon Fight. Pac-Man. I think Brad already answered. I said Pac-Man. Okay, set the line. That's right. Uh, 70? Yep. 41. I'll go under. 